The raptor, Danny. Hey, do you guys it have doesn't look like a mini here? brontosaurus either. Kleenex? Yeah, he does. Um, you need a Kleenex? Yeah, right yes, there. Nice. I'll get it. Oh, he looks like a, it looks like a Thanks, mix Coast. between yeah. two of them. Can and I get a couple of them? About cartoon. He looks like a mix between like a raptor and a brontosaurus. A baby brontosaurus. Because he walks on two legs, not on four. You know? Thank you, brother. So it's kind of like a raptor. Two minutes. Two minutes. Yeah, we're not feeling that, Danny. He's actually a brontosaurus. Yeah, let me pull up a picture of him. It's making me mad. But you want to start the pre-show? or I think started. Oh, it did? Yeah. Oh, okay. Well, everybody heard us discussing brontosaurus. This is uh, this Eve Edwards from Fox <laughs> Sports. He'll be our co-host for the day. He has fought all over the world, including the UFC. Actually, name an organization, and he's fought in it. No, seriously. Bo Dog, Goes just mentioned um, Mark Cuban's HDNet Fights is what it was called. The channel used to be called HDNet Fights. Strike or course. it used to be called HDNet, but uh, they were HDNet Fights. They had two shows. Eve was one on one of them. Bellator, Strike Force, Elite XC, uh, Bodog, uh, UFC, of course, a couple times. Pride. Shooto. Uh, King, King of the Cage. There's King of the Cage. I think yeah. there's only one. And I, well, correct me if I'm wrong, but it was the WEC that you never oh, fought it. No, right? no, no, I he did. The WC. Did you did? Oh, yeah. There was one because we used him as a trivia question on a, a trivia night one time. Uh huh. And there was one that he didn't do. One FC. Yeah. Maybe. Well, maybe, but they haven't been around that long. But um, they did overlap with your career, so you could dream. Say I didn't fight in dream. Do you know Flintstones. Hmm. So, uh, Eve is calling the fights tonight on the UFC Fight Pass, 8 p.m. Eastern, 5 p.m. Pacific. Him and Paul Felder have been alternating weeks in the color commentator uh, position there. And Up it's great, day. man. It's five fights in two hours. They get down. They don't mess around. <laughs> Seriously. I've walked in at 4.55, taken my seat, and literally walked out just in time to get a Fuku Burger. All right? And the Fuku Burger truck leaves at 7. So I know I'm getting all this done in two hours. And now they've upped the AC a little, so it's very comfortable. First couple of days, I was sweating. All right, guys. Coming up at 10. But it's mm -hmm. great times. Tonight, 8 p.m. Eastern on the UFC Fight Pass. Eve will be calling the fights. And we're going to start the show right now. So we're on camera, too? Yes. Oh. Yeah. This so I have to have an etiquette. We are making okay. our descent into Las Vegas from Karen nose. Airport. On behalf of our crew, we'd like to thank you for flying MMA Junkie Airlines. Now please fasten your seatbelts and put your tray tables in your upright position because the descent is going to be a little bit bumpy. <laughs> All right, Junkie Nation, it's time to roll, baby, on MMA Junkie Radio with gorgeous George and Go. This is like what we do and why we do it, baby. All night long, we roll it! Yes! The MMA Junkie Radio Revolution is upon us. Can you dig it? There's no escape. No escape. Through the vast frontier of cyberspace and through a sea of stars in outer space. One small step for man, one giant leap for mankind. We've solidified our combat yep. communication stranglehold. We are controlling transmission. With the use of MMA Junkie Radio and Sirius XM satellite radio technology, MMA Junkie Radio, commence transmission. <laughs> Live from MMA Junkie Radio HQ in the fight capital of the world, Las Vegas, Nevada. Here are your hosts, Gorgeous George and Go. From the fight capital of the world, inside the beautiful Mandalay Bay Racing Sportsbook, you are listening to the MMA Junkie Radio Show, the only show that matters. I'm your host, Gorgeous George. With me, as always, is the devious and dastardly goes. Ari's co-host, back. He's handling all the producing duties, of course. It's going to be Danny Otto sitting to my right, our co-host for the day, former Bodog. WEC, Pride, King of the Cage, Hook and Shoot, UFC, Strike Force, Elite XC, Veteran, <laughs> Shoot, oh, sorry, I left one of them out, uh, <laughs> Eve Edwards, current Fox Sports analyst, and calling the fights tonight on the UFC Fight Pass for Dana White Contend Contender Series 5. What up, Eve? How you doing? I'm good, man. Thanks for having me on. It's Thanks awesome. for doing yeah. the show, man. No sweat. Really it's great fun. to have you. We were talking to you the other day as we were previewing the show in Mexico, and you blew it, man. You let yeah, us, you, you informed trap. us of the fact that you'd be in town, and... 
Ghost and I looked at each other like, excellent, mm -hmm. excellent. Let's get this guy you in here. You didn't see it, but just like Ghostbusters, we slipped that trap up. You were standing. If you right hadn't reminded us, you could be right sleeping in. in right now. As long as y'all don't cross streams. Comfortable yeah. bed. <laughs> <laughs> on a comfortable bed. Wake up, kill that buffet, and then go do the thing. Instead, you're stuck with us. But at least Ghost is going to fetch us some coffee, so that's pretty yeah, cool, right? I'm looking forward to that. But you don't got to say it like that. Fetch us coffee. Well, well, all right. But can I say one thing, though? That's going to Yeah, yeah let's ahead. get this out of the way. Let's get this out of the way. All right. Danny, how the hell do you think Dino looks like a raptor? We're staring at him right he's now. He's playing with a little girl. <laughs> okay. Okay. How do you think he's a brontosaurus? He walks on two legs. He's a mini brontosaurus. Yeah, look at He's got the long neck. Okay. And the does tail. That, he doesn't does have teeth. It? So he's obviously eating plants. He definitely eats. Somebody's calling on the hotline. Yeah. He's not a raptor. He's not Hold a on. raptor, Danny. Uh, hold on. I want to continue this argument. Hold All on. All right. Uh, the other thing is, Goes has called you Eves about five <laughs> times since we walked in the, the room. The other day when we had you on, I told him, I go, hey, this whole time, we've been getting it wrong. It's Eve. It's Eve. Drop the S and Goes went like this. All right. Obviously, he didn't give a fuck because he's literally said it like five times. He walked in. What's yeah. up, Eves? How you been, Eves? Danny, can you hear Eves? Eves, what'd you have for breakfast? Eves, what's your favorite? I mean, you know Eves, the worst would you part? like some <laughs> Danny, too. You know, and I'm like, oh, my God, we just covered that. I thought I just prepped the guys. The worst part is I've caught myself doing it twice, and I didn't know it was five times. And so I feel even worse. Yeah. So you Say his name. Yeah. How, how did I do it to wrong? To be fair, there's probably been a few causes in his history. He's been because saying goes the whole time. All right. I'm dumb, huh? Yeah. All right, let me go, let me go fetch Danny's dumb too because that ain't no uh, that ain't no raptor. That, that right. ain't okay, okay, raptor. but it's not a brontosaurus because he walks on two legs. Uh, now you're getting me mad, Danny. I'm gonna look it up. I promise <laughs> you, it's gonna be a fucking brontosaurus. <laughs> How can he? I want to do a couple he's shout outs. Doesn't mean he can walk on two uh, legs. Uh, Han John John Han uh, says questions. You taking any? We are. Look, it's hard for me to always watch the Facebook and the Twitter, but if you call in eight six six five two 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 eight four six, we'll answer any questions you have, or if you have one for Eve, obviously we'll do that. Uh, Martin Stabilo in Hawaii, shout out to you. Scott McDonald says, I miss the old Strike Force WEC in Pride Days. Who doesn't? We all do, my man. Phoenix Carnavali says, What's up, guys? What's up to you, Phoenix? And Mu La Fista, hey, love you. He called you Gazy. But I think he meant to say Gozy. <laughs> all right. All right, you'll take that one. I'll take that one. All right, so Eve, tonight. I wouldn't take that, Gozy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I got to take that. Eve, tonight, you're calling the fights uh, for Dana White Contender Series 5. Uh, are we. You want to cover that, or have you not yet done the prep? I don't want to mess you up. Um, I've done quite a bit of the prep. Okay, cool. Uh, it's, it's sometimes it's hard. I didn't want you to guys. kick me underneath. Like, hey, I haven't, I haven't looked at it yet. <laughs> it's sometimes it's hard with some of those guys to um, find fights that are that are relevant. You know, um, you go back and you look at some of the YouTube videos, and it's like YouTube videos from four or five years ago. It's kind of fresh, though, right? Learning about some of these new yeah. cats, and they're it hungry, and they have a chance to be in. They not only have to win, they have to impress. They get the thumbs up or the thumbs down. I'm telling you, I've been to three of them so far, and I've loved every single one of them. Almost every better than some of the live events I go to. Yeah, every fight is good. It's kind of like uh, I feel like it has that pride mentality where you have to fight. You can't, you can't get a lead and just try to cruise to the finish or, or, or play, play within the rules to score points. Right. You have to go out there and you have to destroy and win and, and get yourself noticed so you can get that contract. And everybody, I mean, this is a huge opportunity. All, everybody wants to be in the UFC. When you're, when you're fighting mixed martial arts, you want to be the best in the world to be the best in the world you have to hold on to that ufc title that's what everybody feels that everybody believes that and these guys know that's the opportunity that's in front of them so when they go out there and fight they're fighting to gain something they're not fighting to protect anything they're trying to get somewhere and then and i love that attitude i mean that's the old pride way of of fighting for the finish fighting to get the win not fighting to to score points mm -hmm. and i love that and tell me about you probably love them both, but is there a favorite between being at the Fox desk in front of millions on TV and doing it that way versus being a color commentator and, and commentating on the fights and obviously a quicker pace? Do you love one more than the other? <sighs> They're different. It's like having two kids. Mm -hmm. You know, you can't pick a favorite. Um, I love the desk work because it's, it's a little bit slow. It's a little more relaxed and, um, it's predictions and then it's a reaction, right. you know, but when you're, when you're doing the live fights, it's, it's kind of like coaching. Um, it's, it's reacting to what you're seeing right now immediately and 
explaining where somebody needs to go to to advance or or to defend themselves and and it's it's slightly different but um it's like a set of twins it's like um my son used to love that that show zach and cody it's like those two kids gotcha. it's like one of them's a studious and um the other one's like just a troublemaker and that's kind of like what it's at at the desk the yeah. desk is like more studious and 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 there's a little more chaos when you're doing fights live you know journalism is interesting because there's so many branches of it you know broadcasting and videographer and being a writer and so goes and i've gotten to call fights and so you're up close and you can it's more raw you hear everything you know all the thuds from the punches and kicks and elbows and blood spilling on our laptops and you know but when it's over it's pretty exhausting and you're just kind of glad to go home and now i know i know one's talking about that after party so i'll have one drink but this whole after party man i just spent myself you know what i mean but at the same time, we really love talking to all these fighters like yourself and broadcasters and managers, promoters. And so I'd say I'd still lean a little bit more towards our just, you know, doing a radio show. But calling fights is pretty cool, man. I'd either have to just not do this anymore and only focus on that. But to do them both would be a little tough. You think so? Well, because this is Monday through Friday. And then you want to watch the fights that you talked about all week. Now, obviously, if it was... Because it'd be so much travel, because then you'd be traveling on Saturday, Sunday, all the, and then coming back on Monday and hitting it one more time, you know. So we'd, we'd have to reduce our work here if that's what we started doing more consistently. You only live once, George. True. That's a good point. Um, but I'm glad that you're branching out like that and doing, you know, different forms of journalism. I'm going to try and get back into this podcast world, because podcasting is fun. That's right. You, know, you, you, get you, to talk you were doing with Brian Stan for a while, right? Brian Stan and I had a podcast, and I, and I had one um, on my own also mm -hmm. through SureDog. Dog. Um, I just like talking to guys, man. I like getting to know some of the younger fighters. Right. It's, it's fun. And um, I feel like when I, when I speak to them, especially guys who know their history or know the history of the sport, uh, it's, it's fun to, to get them to open up to you, you know. So mm -hmm. I like talking to guys like that. Um, I have a lot of fun. I, I, do, I try to do that with the guys on the Contender Show. It's weird because I feel like these guys are so young. Um, when I was fighting, they were in, in elementary school, and they probably have no idea who I am, but some of them do, and... and, and Getting to talk to them uh, when they open up, it's it's so much fun to kind of see that in their eyes, that 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 desire to to fight in the UFC, fight at that level, and to talk to someone who's been there and, and had some of those experiences that they want to have. So it's it's a lot of fun talking to these guys, man, and watching them get there. Does anyone from the younger generation ever just re know you from the video where you're you and Josh Thompson? You know, they played in the UFC. They have a, they've yet to eliminate it. I think that thing's a lifer. Because they cycle them in, cycle them out. There's always new highlights and others get phased out. But at least last time I checked, you're still in it. But does anyone ever just recognize you from that? I don't know. Um, nobody's ever pointed it out. Oh, you're the guy that you're did guy. that thing. Yeah. Um, but I'm sure I'm sure they've seen it. Mm -hmm. But um, I don't know if that stands out. To, I mean, it, it would, I think it would stand out more to, to a fight fan mm -hmm. rather than a fighter. A fighter will go back and watch watch more fights. Um, I think the fans would just would just see that one thing, and they probably wouldn't even know it's me. When you're in the arena, do you still get a kick out of seeing that? It's fun. Yeah, yeah I saw it. Um, you remember it in great detail, like the fight and just that sequence. I yeah, kind it's gotta of. Gotta be one of your detail. best moments ever, right? Yeah, um, it was it was it was a fun fun moment for sure. It was something I I always I had a gym in in the Woodlands, Texas back then, and I used to teach everybody. You know, off of breaks, you always throw kicks, throw kicks, blast the legs, blast the legs, and then eventually throw the kick to the head. And then I remember thinking I was in there with Josh, and um, I was thinking I don't give a fuck if he blocks this i'm kicking his head and if he blocks him kicking through his hand i just don't care and that's why i slipped and it made it look even cooler mm -hmm. and from the angle they show it you can tell he's setting something up you know <laughs> so if like they were to slow it down i bet you could almost have like this little wry smile like i'm, I'm about to get this guy because he wants to throw something at you too you know but little does he know you're coming in with a bigger hammer yeah little does he know i'm smarter i have mm -hmm. a better plan yeah no seriously man i'm glad that certain highlights stay you know and like they don't they'll never phase out forest and, and bonner right. they reduced it they used to show us a lot more and but now you know there's just so many there's new so highlights yeah there's so many i mean the sport is different man the the reason why i have n i've never held a ufc title is because of where the sport was at the time i mean they, they couldn't support five champions with five pay-per-views a year now there's like 30 plus shows a year mm. you know we've got 11 weight classes now what is it 
Uh, the men's ten, right? The men's ten, but then we've got the three and well, four. Th soon to be four. F soon to be four. We've got the reality classes. show going on. Yep. So and Cyborg just got hers to you know reignite that flame because Jermaine had gotten stripped. Yeah. Let me see. The men have 25, 35, 45, 55, uh, 70, 70, 85. 85. No, eight. 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 Yeah, it, it was always ten because of women. The women thirty-five. Right, the women women. Yeah, that threw me off for a second. I should know better. Uh, tonight, it's Mike Rodriguez versus Jamel Jones is uh, the main event. Can you tell us a little bit about that fight? Yeah, um, I'm really excited about that fight, especially um, we got we got two different style guys in there. We got Jamel, Jamel Jones, and he's he's a wrestler, big puncher, um, decent ground submission game, but he wants he wants the fight to play out one way. He just definitely not want to stay on the outside with with Mike Rodriguez and and. Mike is a kickboxer, you know. Mike is—he started out with Muay Thai, and then he started training with Joe Lozon and rounded out his game. And but he's one of those guys. He reminds me—he's—he's uh, he's my kind of mixed martial artist. No, I'm not saying I don't like Jamel jo Jamel Jones, right. but he's my type of mixed martial artist in that he—he he will look for the way to finish the fight. He will look for for different opportunities, whether it be the striking department. If he, if he can keep you on the outside and keep his striking going, he will do that. If you can take him down, he's going to go through those transitions. He, he's going to hit sweeps and try to try to sweep you in in your takedown. Um, he will attack with submissions from his back. He'll attack with submissions from the top. I mean. He's just one of those fun guys. It's kind of like the old school prototype, the the, the, the present day um, evolution of the old school prototype of mixed martial artist that 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 was able to do uh, everything um, competently. So I, that's I'm really excited about that fight because the wrestler is always a trouble for that kind of guy. Mm -hmm. he, a wrestler is always a guy that can slow that guy down because they have a little more knowledge of how to control hips. And I don't want people to think that this is all up and comers. I know most of them have been, and a lot of the people that are graduating to the UFC are exactly that. But the Contender Series is also giving one last chance uh, to a veteran, maybe one that's either older in age or experienced some losses, or maybe one that's done the regional circuit. Like, I've watched this Donovan Freelo from Tough Enough, and then I've seen him in the pro circuit. Tough kid, man. Yeah. Uh, Vegas kid. So I'm happy to see his name on there. I've seen Alex Perez before. I really, really like can't say it enough the contender series especially counting on eight weeks back to back to back man it's been money it's it's been a lot of fun and i mean every single week every fight is entertaining you know we had we had one week i think it was two weeks ago because i was here last time i was i was doing that one we had a couple injuries that that kind of sucked the eye pokes between um jolly and oh god i can't remember jolly's opponent's name right now off the top of my head but um that one was not fun and then um Stewart and Jackson, when Jackson went down and, and hurt his ankle, um, and with that crow cop kind of thing, that that was disappointing because that fight was was turning out to be a good fight, man. Both of those guys had their moments in the first round, and um, that big left hand or that big right hand that, that Jackson got hit with, um, and he hurt his ankle, and it kind of ended that one. And then like Alonzo you said, Menafield was the ge the gentleman. Yes, name. Menafield, okay. that's his name. Um, but like you said, um, they they give guys opportunities. You know, Jackson was was in the on the Ultimate Fighter. Um, Jamel Jones, he was on the Ultimate Fighter. He lost there. Uh, and we have guys like Kurt Hollibaugh came back. And man, Slick. Kurt Hollibaugh, he lo he looks so good. I can't wait to see him in the UFC against against that level of guy again, and and see what he does this time around. Yeah, uh, I thought that week that you're talking about, I was in Anaheim for UFC 214. But I thought Dan Eag was a local kid here out of Extreme. I thought for sure he was going to get a contract. Yeah. We're all kind of cheering for him. I was rooting for him. I thought uh, he was he was my if you go back and watch the episode, he was my um he was my lead pick for that one. He until I don't remember what other fights happened, but there was there was another fight that I think he took the lead that someone took the lead, but I did Jeff believe, Neal, Kyle Stewart, Jeff Kyle Neal. Ro Carl Robertson were the other winners. No, no. Carl Robertson, that yeah, was it because yeah. of how, how quickly elbow. he with the with the short elbows in the, on, on the fence. But um, no, Dan Ige, man, I hope he gets back in there and gets another opportunity because the way he dominated that fight against uh, the Cuban kid, he was, a, he was a tough wrestler. Um, I think he's, his judo is good, and, and those when when you have good judo, you have really good hips. It's hard to take those guys down. I mean, Hector, I, I've seen him in there just defending takedowns uh, in the gym at American Top Team and in fights. He's he's always been one of those guys who's been very difficult to take down. Um, and he's the, the kid is is a good boxer. He's a great boxer. He's down at American Top Team. Masvidal has nothing but good things to say about him. And Danny Gay came out there and just dominated every aspect of the fight. Um, and 
pretty much from start to finish, man. Um, that's that's what you want to see, and I want I want to see him get another opportunity. He didn't get a contract on that night, which I was disappointed in. But um, I hope they bring him back. If if not before the end of this season, I hope so in in season two early. What took you from Conroe, Texas, to American Top Team? Just the amount of bodies that were available. Because when I when we were first covering you, when we we first met you. You were, I remember it was a city at Conroe, Texas, a suburb of Houston. I had to look it up. Where's that? I knew it was Houston, but still, uh, you went there. But now we're seeing a resurgence of Houston a little bit. Uh, I know Valentina Shashenko trains out of a gym there. I know Derek Lewis trains out of a gym there. So at the time, it just it didn't have the bodies that you needed. Or, or Do you remember the exact reason? Yeah, um, it, was, it was different. I mean, mixed martial arts wasn't what it is now then. Um, where Valentina Shashenko trains... That kid, the guy that runs that gym, he was one of my students. He was a high school kid, and he was one oh, of my nice students shit. back then, Chase Corley. Um, we call him Irish, Irish Muay Thai. <laughs> but, um, yeah, he, he, he was in my corner a couple times. You see him in my corner in Pride. Um, just a good kid. And, and, and Houston has just grown, you know. Mixed martial arts wasn't what it is now there. It wasn't what it, what it is in the world at the time. And, and it's grown, and, and Houston has has a good history in the sport. I mean, um, she going all the way back to Sam Atkins. You know, Sam Atkins was in Houston. He was one of my training partners when I was just a kid. Um, He's OG, man. Yeah. Is it like uh, People are like, who the hell is Sam Atkins? Why is he talking about somebody we don't know? Yeah, go back and watch Fight Pass. See, I, I'm like a Fight Pass salesman. You go yeah. back and watch Fight Pass, and you'll find some of these names that I'm talking about. But um, the reason I moved to American Top Team – Part of it was that there was there was nobody around, you know. In Houston, it was myself, Carlo Prater, Tim Crater, and um, I was helping those guys get Don't better. Don't forget the real Joker. And <laughs> the real Joker, who everybody on the underground hated. He, <laughs> you know that kid is my neighbor. Yeah. Um. He's. he's <laughs> I got a kick out of him. I, I I love that kid, man. I still love him. He's he's a good dude, man. Um, the real Joker, Chad Martin. He has a he puts up um his predictions now. He's 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 getting trying to get back into the sport and, and do because he things. was a kid. He was a kid and he, he would post and he could he had the ability to troll, but you still have to respect the fact that he he trained too, you know. And he so, knew what he was talking right. about. So you know, and a lot of people that were like older and giving him shit, you know. One could still say, hey, okay, you're older, you're wiser, he's joking, he's trolling, he's doing this. But he's still training and out learning you, you know yeah. what I mean? Yeah. So that's why I always got a kick out of him. Plus, I thought it was always cool that I, – I don't know if he was like the type of neighbor where you just wanted to flick him at times and say, not now, you know. But I know you, a lot of times when you fought, he'd go to your fights and he'd be in a lot of your pictures pre and post. So it was cool that if you accepted him, then we knew he was – more than just a troll. Yeah, no, he was a good dude, man. He 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 was a great troll, though. I mean, uh, we used to play video games online and whatnot. And I remember there was one night I was playing on Madden, and this kid he was just running his mouth all night. And um, he was he was doing a good job because he was getting in my head, and he was he was oh. he was screwing up my game, and he beat me on a field goal at the end of the game. And I I I, had, I called Joker, and I was like, Chad, man, you got to play this kid. And he, he he challenges the kid to play. And uh, this is like some 13-year-old kid who's just talking a lot of shit to me. And he's running his mouth. He's one of those kids that he talks back to his parents. You could tell, you know. Um, Chad made him cry and quit before the game was over. Really? So it was awesome. <laughs> I was like, yes, that's my guy right The reverse. There. You're supposed to be bailing him out. <laughs> and he bailed you out. He bailed. He was my internet. He was my internet hero, man. Yeah. Chad was awesome. Now you're back in Austin, right? Uh, no, I'm, I'm in L.A. Oh, in L.A.? You live in L.A.? I live in L.A. I live in Eagle Rock now. Oh, Um, where's Eagle Rock? Eagle Rock is between Glendale and Pasadena. Oh, okay. Wow, I know L.A. real good because I'm from L.A. I I think I've heard of that, but um, that's a city? It's part of L.A. Part of L.A. It's called Eagle Rock, but uh, my address says Los Angeles. What made you move there, Fox? Uh, Yeah, that's why I moved to Los Angeles. Um to do more fox work and, and just i have my sag card also so i've been doing some stunt and stunts uh, stunts and acting um tune in to on cbs november 2nd there's a new show coming out called swat i did um the pilot episode for that and based uh, on the original la swat team you know. uh yeah it's based it's okay. it's based on that movie it's kind of like how rush hour is based mm-hmm. on the rush hour movies so it's not the same characters, but it's the same principle. Um, what can you tell us about SWAT? Are you a SWAT member or are you I a bad guy? I'm a bad guy, um, but I'm an, I'm an elite level bad guy. So yeah. when you see me out there just messing, messing fools up, you're going you're gonna to be like, that's what's, my dog. What's the name that's of your evil. gang? Um, Do you have a name? Or? We're, uh, we're not in a gang. We're some ex-military. Damn, George, why does it got to be a gang member? Yeah, it's because I'm uh. black, right? <laughs> 
I don't know. I, I, I guess, yeah. Okay. <laughs> you got me. There's a lot of different I types mean, of I, bad I, guys, George. Well, there is, but uh, okay. I, are you a diamond heister? I mean, I don't know. I'm just a, a social and political um, vagrant. Yeah. Maybe he managed like a hedge fund account and just went rogue. A white, a white collar crime? Yeah. Thanks a lot, guys. <laughs> 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 and you know what? The funny thing is I want to tackle a topic with you today. All right. Yes. Um, but I want to get this commercial out of the way. And then we'll take some calls. Showtime can actually contribute. 866-522-2846. And I'll give you guys the teaser of what I want to talk tackle. I want to tackle why African Americans are so quick to come to the defense of other African Americans when you know deep down they don't feel that way, but it's that brotherhood. You know what I mean? I want to know about that. I want to know if you see it, if you've ever been a part of it, because I think I've seen it. Either that or I'm overreacting. And sometimes it really gets on my tits. Because I really like criticism is criticism. I don't care about color um, or anything like that. You know what I mean? If it's bad, that was bad. If it's good, I'll be the first one to high five, fist bump, whatever. But still, sometimes I see it. Sometimes it's also not a color thing. It's a wrestler thing. The wrestler will back up the wrestler no matter what. Sometimes it's a, it's a team thing. Yep. You just can't say something bad about, for example, ATT or Cruz in the Alliance. And I'm wondering, like, okay, I get it. I, I, I've probably done it myself here at times. Um, I just finished telling Eve about Dan Ige, Ige, who I thought, you know, I, I told him we were cheering for him because we've seen him a lot with Ali. So I, I, but, you know, I find myself 9 out of 10 times or at least 19 out of 20 just really, really trying to be as straight as possible. And if not, at least giving you the, uh, the caveat of where I stand. But anyway, we'll talk about that when we come back. You're listening to MMA Junkie Radio on Sirius XM Rush 93. Eve Edwards in the house.
Southern California. Maybe. They can drink Mentos flavored Diet Coke without their stomachs giving a single fuck. They are gorgeous George and Goes. And this is MMA Chunky Radio. The Premier League kicks off this week, and the place to hear the top matches is Sirius XM FC Channel 85. Play by play coverage starts Friday at 2 30 Eastern when Leicester City, Leicester City, excuse me, visits Arsenal. The action is on Channel 85 and on the Sirius XM app. Also, quick plug for the Man U Red Devils. They play Real Madrid today at 11 45 a.m. Pacific time. Fox Sports 1 has you covered. Check it out. Uh, it's the winner of last year's Champions League versus the winner of the Europa League, and that's why they call it the Super Cup. So go, Man U. If the game's being played in Macedonia which is a country that is north of uh, Greece. And I'm hearing that it's brutal weather, and they will institute the three-minute breaks just so that the uh, players get stay hydrated. So check it out, folks. H uh, highest level of soccer. All right. Do you want to spring that thing you were going to spring on me before I get into... It's really silly, though. Do you care? Or? Nah, I don't care. Uh, so in the morning, we asked Eve if he wanted a coffee. And his first reaction was... Oh, boy. No, yeah, okay. because I'll shit my pants. <laughs> So the whole time I was in line, I was Quite thinking, the overreaction there. Yeah, that's what I was thinking. Like, how fragile is this system that <laughs> right. a little bit of coffee would just completely destroy it? And then that turned into taking a dump conversation. But he does something that you do. Only he takes it to a whole new level. When you take a dump, you take your shirt off, right? Right. He takes everything off but his what? But your, your socks or what? I can't keep my socks on. And so everything dump, comes man. off? Yeah. Wait a minute. So if I were to walk <laughs> in right there, I'd see two little black feet just hanging well, out? <laughs> no, because I don't do that in public. Oh, okay. I, I can't I can't, because I can't get that comfortable. Unless it's an emergency, I won't go in public. And, and in public again. Um, I'm a home game as guy as well. I don't like the away game. So. The away game's tough. Uh, I had this issue one time. We were driving up to Denver to I went for the, for the Bosch Rootin Invitational. I had an issue, and I don't like public restrooms. Um, so the one time that I did have to do that, uh, I was hanging off of the stalls because I wouldn't, I didn't want my ass to touch the seat and I'm hanging off of the stalls. There was no I, seat covers? Uh, I, I don't, I don't, I don't even think you trust those. I don't, yeah, I, I don't trust well, them. Well, it's better than nothing. Though, and right? then I'm like. Better than a raw dog. It's, be it is better than raw dog, but also like I can't let my junk sit between my legs because then it touches the water. Mm -hmm. I don't want that to happen. So I'm hanging, I'm holding on to the things and I have my feet on the door and I'm just holding on and then that's the hardest, the hardest thing to do is flex and try to relax at the same time. <laughs> try to relax your asshole. So that was kind of hard. Um, so you're like but, Van Damme? <laughs> but when I'm at home, man, everything comes off. Uh, usually just jump right in the shower afterwards because uh, <laughs> make sure every last Colonel comes out and yeah. got you. All right. I'm with you, except I don't need all the clothes to come off. And I rarely go in here, but if you ever do go within the Manley Bay, step towards the Delano, There's the you're completely enclosed. So It's really nice. Yeah. They have a waterfall. And you can really oh, do whatever nice. you want. they got a hook to hang your clothes and everything. But, see, I need so many things, man. Um, I, like, but I, I can't have my feet together. Like I have to have my pants off because my feet, feet if I feel like my feet are cuffed, I can't relax. I, I hear uh, I you. Need, I need a, I have a squatty potty. I hear so. you on everything, but I think you can keep the shoes and the socks on, right? What, what, how's that going to interfere? It's now you can spread your legs if you want. Yeah. But well, I, I, if, if imagine for whatever reason the toilet leaked and all of a sudden poopoo water's coming out and now it's seeping through your toes. Then I'm jumping in the bathtub. Yeah, well, here at the Manly Bay, where's the bathtub? No, I'm not. I, I'm not That's taking off saying. all my clothes have, at the Manly Bay. You have to Bay. make adjustments when you're on the road. Yeah, but I don't like to be on the road. I try to avoid that at all costs. <laughs> I try to. You don't take off your shirt? I thought you finally tried it and said, hey, this ain't a bad idea. No, I tried wiping my ass with my left hand for a week. Oh. That's miserable. Yeah. I tore my bicep, and I had to have surgery, and um, I couldn't use this arm for anything. And um, that was the worst time in my life because I was taking those opiates to, to, for the pain, mm -hmm. and, and that got me constipated. That was, I like I always I would go to the bathroom and you try to shit and it's like it's not happening you think you're constipated no I was constipated I was like mm, I, I was just sent somebody on a coffee run shit, that was <laughs> I would have solved it right? yeah, probably would have solved it but I was miserable man but then when I finally did get some stuff going 
I had to wipe my ass with my left hand, and that's difficult. People don't know that, and so I use that as a bet on a lot of people because it seems so harmless. People are like, yeah, dude, I'll take you for a steak dinner. And what worst that's going to happen to me, I got to wipe my ass with my left hand. It's miserable. Yeah. It's horrible. It's the, har- it's the hardest thing I ever had to do, and I fought in the UFC. That's true. I cross my feet when I uh, – so I don't put them together, but I cross them like that. I, that's weird. I got a buddy that when he pees, he puts his pants to his knees. So he always has to go in the stall. He doesn't want to get laughed at. But one time we caught him because we had a bachelor party, so we rented a a, um, a motorhome. And he went in there, and so everybody's just drinking. We had a big old sandwich, just bullshitting music. And some guy just had to go, so when he opened it, you know how those are more flimsy, those doors? He sees the guy just stand there with with the pants to his knee. He goes, Johnson. He goes, come on, man. You pee with your pants all the way. He's, oh, man. And he finally just admitted it. But he goes, I just can't shake it. Ever since I was a kid, that's my thing. And... uh that's yeah. a, though, that's awesome. I, I was at the Alamo Draft House in Austin, and I was going to the bathroom, and this guy, he's walking in the bathroom ahead of me, and he holds the door, like what that lady did for us when we were coming in. He holds the door, and I'm like, all right, cool. But then he continues, and he goes to the stall, and there's already a guy at stall number one. There's five stalls. He goes to stall number four. So he leaves me in this predicament where, you know, you go to the bathroom, there's an unwritten rule. You leave a stall between each guy right. when, yeah. there's, when there's enough people. I right. mean, enough stalls. Every so other. there's one, and he goes to four. So that means I'm either going to have to stand next to the first guy or next to him. I'm going to have to stand next to somebody. You go to two because if one was already there, he's the likelihood is he'll then end he'll first. first. Yeah. But no, I was like, well, if this guy's going to be a dick, I'm going to be a dick. And I went to three, stood right next to him. I pulled my pants down around my ankles and just watched him <laughs> while I peed. <laughs> Stared right at him the whole time. <laughs> hey, I'm thinking about something. When he was hanging... From the thing, yeah. if you walked into the restaurant, you probably think he's getting a blowjob or something, right? I think, you yeah. You wouldn't think he's taking a shit like that. Or trying to break out through the top, or I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> break out through the <laughs> I mean, why else would he be up there, right? Uh, yeah. I, I, don't, I don't think I'd have to escape. But, but why would I have to escape from or, Walmart? Or, or maybe you or maybe you were maybe the guy that had to take a shit you were riding his shoulders and so you were just <laughs> <laughs> he goes hey you, you guys were doing a bet and he like goes you, you can't separate you got you know the, does the bet come off no all right well, all right, well i'll sit up here <laughs> never mind all right so uh, earlier we were talking about well you know what happened was i'll just jump right into it eve uh tyrone woodley had his fight versus damian maya i think tyrone woodley is an excellent fighter i just thought his last fight wasn't exciting and I, many people shared my sentiment. Now, granted, there were a lot of people that felt, okay, it was tactical, he did what he did, blah, 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 whatever. But if you listen to them long enough, eventually they came around to say, yeah, yeah, it wasn't the most exciting fight. And it was sandwiched in between uh, Cyborg, who lit up Avenger, and Jones, who eventually lit up Cormier, you know. So, anyway, um, the one thing I noticed that night was a, a lot of our listeners, who are great friends of ours, one of them's on hold, uh, African Americans. They came up short on the criticism. And this is something that I've noticed for a while now. And now these are the guys that will come in on a Monday and bash the fighters that weren't, not bash, just give their thoughts on respectfully on fights that weren't exciting. But when they are, again, they're the first to congratulate, just like a normal fan. But I noticed this had been a pattern, and sure enough, it got highlighted um, and they said, oh, no, no, what he did was tactical. No, get off my man's back. And, you know, and, and the brother did what he could or whatever. Why is that? Am I on to something here or am I completely off base? Or I don't think you're off base. I think uh, a lot you get that from certain people. Um, you get that sometimes from teammates, friends, uh-huh. whatever. Um, I agree with you. I thought the fight was, was lackluster. And um, it was... I. Tyron is capable of so much more. And on top of that, he demands this adoration. You know, he, he goes, he stands in front of, of cameras and, and tells people that they should love him because he's an athlete and he does, and he's amazing and he's this and that. But then if you're going to say that, you got to back it up. Mm. Don't compare yourself to Conor McGregor and say that Conor, I'm, I'm not doing anything different than Conor does when Conor goes out there and finishes fights. Um, Tyron is... Like I said, he's capable of doing these things, but um, there's, there's a, I think, I, I truly believe there's a confidence issue. Not in that he's not confident, confident in himself, but there, there, there's, there's 
a challenge there at times. Let's look at the fight with Rory McDonald. Um, Rory's not the wrestler that Tyron is. At least he doesn't have the resume or the pedigree that Tyron has. But um, he was able to take Tyron down, control the fight, and, and, and do things that, that made Tyron uncomfortable during the fight. Yeah, he's grown a lot since then. Right. But the fact that that, that, that has happened... Um, and this is a guy who doesn't have the wrestling pedigree that he has and was able to stifle his wrestling and do the things that he was able to do and be successful and beat him in that fashion. Um, y- you, just, you just have to accept fighting for what it is, and if you're going to go out there and play within the rules and it's not going to be as exciting and entertaining as, as the people that are watching, yeah, you don't have to do that every single time. But when you won the title, you did that. Um, since then, the first fight with Wonderboy, it was entertaining at times, but it also had its lulls. But the second fight was a lot more lulls because there was some, some concern with the problems that he did give you, right? And it's just, it's just being honest. Mm-hmm. I'm sorry, but like you, you, can, you, can, you can play the black card, you can say whatever it is, but that's, that's how I look at it, and, and it, it just is what it is. Mm-hmm. Do blacks, th- there can't be an unwritten rule, but is there an unwritten rule where you just are going to give someone the benefit of the doubt um, just because, hey, you're a brother like I'm a brother? It all depends like on the Without even knowing play. them. I even see it in other sports. Yeah, but it, I know? think it depends on the cards you play. You know what I mean? Because oh. I can't stand the way white people have ch- treated blacks for many years, but we'll get out of that in even modern day, all right? Yeah. And sometimes I wonder if because blacks push back and come back over the top, that that's what uh, prevents the com- the country from, like, healing. You know what I mean? Um, and I, I saw I saw it. You know, I saw it with some of our listeners and buddies um, just defending, but I felt like it was more of the defense just because – why? Why is why is the criticism so loud? Because it's a brother. Whereas when GSP fought, we got a lot of that. You know what I mean? Yeah. But I, I, I mean, I'm telling you, I have a. I mean, I've occupied this planet for 47 years, so I've seen a lot. Um, and sometimes they get it wrong, and I'll admit it. But sometimes I can tell the sense isn't because GSP was also one of those bi- fighters that was kind of boring. No, it was more because I had to compare it to a white guy, and what better than one in the same division? See, there's a there's a different reality for for especially Black Americans versus say myself because of the way the world is where where I'm from and where I grew up. I mean, my principals, my teachers, my doctors, they were black, you know. Until I moved to America, um, what age did you move? I moved here at 15. Okay. So yeah, I was still young and I spent most of my life here. But I have that experience. I know what it's like. To, to have to go to go to the doctor and every doctor in the hospital is black you know the guy that's running the hospital is a black man um, or a black woman um, so so it's, a, it's I think it's a little different reality and I, I, I can't speak to it in a sense from experience um, not from that time but I, I do have the experience of being black in America also so I, I get it to a very high degree but not like someone who's had to live that life their entire life mm-hmm. um, I understand supporting um, supporting your fellow man um, in 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 say the aspect of, of being a teammate um, I've been on American top team for a long time and I will always support an American top team fighter um, same thing with my house. I got into an argument with, with a girlfriend in the past because somebody w- was trying to tell me I couldn't park my car there, and she, she came along and told me to move it. And it's like, when we're in public, you back me up. Like, if you, even if you disagree with me, um, and if, if the argument's already started, mm-hmm. you know, and if, if you're just jumping in, you got to be on my side. We can figure that out ourselves later. Mm-hmm. But when, when we're out in front of people, we, we have to be united. We have to be united front. Otherwise, it's like, we're just going to fail. Mm-hmm. Well, How did so she respond to that? She heard what I had to I, say. I completely agree with you. Yeah, she 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 accepted what I said after the fact. But I mean, at that point, the da- from the damage from that thing was already done, mm-hmm. and um, that didn't end up working out anyway. No. <laughs> <laughs> Have you noticed what I'm talking about, though? A little bit, yeah. yeah. But I um, I do notice <coughs> it in the African American community. But I think it's very easy to just point to another community and and see the same oh yeah stuff yeah, like yeah definitely julio cesar chavez was but i would say there's more of a pushback from blacks 
than Latinos, for example. Yeah, but there's also there's also so many years of of I get of, that. of oppression and and, yeah. and yeah. just difficulty just because of the color of your skin. I get that. I mean, I came to this country. But sometimes that pushback is towards whites that harbor no feelings at all. You know what I mean? Of of prejudice. It's just calling a fight for the way it was. Yeah. You know, not like, oh, my God, but deep down, this is how I read it. No, I, just the Woodley fight was, wasn't as exciting. I agree. You know, that, that's I, I all. Don't, I don't, I'm I don't, just focusing on the MMA. I, I agree. And I don't think um, – I don't like when the race card is played in sports when it doesn't apply. I don't think that, that being entertaining has anything to do with the color of your skin. Mm-hmm. The fight itself, you look at the numbers, right, and the numbers aren't entertaining. You know, when, when it's the least amount of strikes thrown in a title fight, mm. that's not entertaining. Um, yeah, there's a lot of takedowns and takedowns defended. Um, and I understand the fact and after the fact that, you know, he had a shoulder injury. And I remember when Tyron had a torn labor. Yeah, he said he hurt answer. his hand too. So I, I get all of that. But the facts are the facts and the numbers help explain the facts and help show evidence toward the fact that it was not entertaining. There weren't there He's were had things that were four done. UFC finishes that have been incredible. Yeah. Like Koscheck, Haran, Lawler and uh was another great KO he had. Koscheck, Haran, Koscheck, Lawler. Haran, Lawler. Oh, um Dalyon Kim. Yeah, that was a great one too. You know, and they should stand on their own. Yeah. You know, Tyron's a great fighter, man. Absolutely. And he's um, a great person. Great That's person. The part that bothers me I the love most. the community work he does. Ambassador. I've learned so much following his uh champ camp. Mm-hmm. Um but on this last fight, I just felt like the fight just wasn't one of his best, exactly. you know. And I it, agree. it sucks cuz you have 3 weeks or sorry, 3 months or 6 months before your next one before you can write the ship. So when you go back to back, like Thompson 2 and then this one, oh, that's about a year of criticism, you know what I mean? So I can understand on his end, it, you want to say like fuck you, you know like suck on these nuts. I mean, don't you remember the Lawler fight or whatever? But um so I, I you know, I think uh not just him, but a lot of athletes can learn different ways to uh combat that and and embrace you know criticism a little bit better uh to communicate with your fans just so that your fan base also they want to stand with you you know what i mean through thick and thin through thick and thin so you gotta uh you gotta like you gotta give them i guess uh you gotta respect them as well um but i've kind of talked blue to um, blue in the face just because it's been 10 days but i th- it was a topic that I wanted to wait for the right time to have it, and I felt like we could have an adult conversation with you. The one thing about sport, I mean, all sport, it's what have you done for me lately when it comes to the fans? What have you done lately? Because that's that's the last thing they remember. Um, only hardcore fans remember who was the NFL champion 12 years ago on on a dime, right? Be able to answer that question right away. Um, the, the fans from that city or the fans of that team, right? But... um. Do you go? 2005, who's the NFL champion? The New England Patriots. I was going to say the Pittsburgh Steelers, but I don't know. I just figured I'd have a good shot because they, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they won five in the last 15 years. <laughs> he sounded convinced, though, right? Yeah. Um, but, I mean, that's what sport is. Mm-hmm. So you can't go back and, and, and constantly bring up the past when we're talking the most recent past hasn't been yeah. that way. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. It's, just, it's just the nature of the beast. Now, I will say – not just Tyron. Tyron just has, happens to be the most relevant. But a lot of MMA athletes can be really, really sensitive to criticism. Yes. They're part of a sport that grew up in front of our own eyes. I mean, literally the birth mm-hmm. was, ni- you know, 1993. Leaving NHB aside and the Helio Gracie fights and all that stuff. No, just talking about, you know, UFC 1 and everything that happened after that. It's grown in front of our eyes. And it grew right around the time the Internet just poof, became a part of everyone's lives and the fact that you could talk to an athlete you know what i mean that's just something that's you don't get that in any other sport so the connectivity is really really cool but at the same time everybody grows up a little bit and then you know uh oftentimes i, I know the athletes just take the criticism shitty when we first started doing the show oh boy if somebody was clowning us i was in there banging what the fuck you know like me like me like me so i get that but at the same time you guys are like to a, a thousand level of fandom of you know of Anybody that listens to our show, we we have thousands of listeners, but you guys have millions of fans. So I can only imagine that, you know, when it's your worst moment, a loss, you know, in front of millions, it, it must just be crushing. And then to go on there and have all the Monday Monday morning quarterbacks telling you what to do, I get it. It kind of sucks. Um, I still have people shitting on me about the Hominick fight, and that um, like that was a, that was a big deal to me. That was um, man, like that fucked with my head, you know. That, that was fight. about twelve years ago, wasn't it? 
Mm, yeah, maybe 2006, wow. maybe. You let me let me have you hold on to that thought. Like we gotta take this commercial right now. You're listening to MMA Junkie Radio on Sirius XM Rush 93. We have Eve Edwards in the house. He'll be calling the fights tonight on the UFC Fight Pass, 8 p.m. Eastern, 5 p.m. Pacific. We'll come back. We'll talk about that fight that haunts you, and we'll take the call. Showtime from Tennessee will be up first, followed by Ryan from Alberta. We'll be right back. Let's see. Up, up, down, down, left, right, left, right. B A start. You told me that code would get rid of them. Yeah. Well, they're still here. Okay, but now they know I tried to kill them. Hold on, mom. Here are George and goes. Are you a passionate sports fan? Are you interested in today's baseball games, NFL training camp news, off-season hoops movement, and the upcoming Mayweather McGregor fight? They're fighting goes. Yeah, apparently. Okay, I didn't know that. Was in a ring cage? If you answered yes to any of these questions, then the Vegas Stats and Information Network is for you. Listen to SiriusXM Channel 204 for live updates on all the action to find out where the smart money is going. It's the Vegas Stats and Information Network right now on SiriusXM Channel 204. I believe one of the men associated with that is Al Bernstein goes, and I'm happy to say Al Bernstein will be on tomorrow's show. Cool. Tomorrow we'll have Kevin Ioli. In studio as a co-host for the show, we'll have Mike Perano, the sportsbook director here at the Mandalay Bay. He'll chime in on Mayweather McGregor odds. It started off at minus 1,200 for uh, Floyd Mayweather, and he's down to – where's that goes? Have you seen it? Here it is. Uh, he's down to 575. So McGregor money pouring in hand over fist. Al Bernstein will join us, and so will Chidi and Jaquani. So great show we have planned uh, for tomorrow. Let's take this call from – Ryan from Alberta. Uh, he's up first. What's up, Ryan? How you doing? Hey, how's it going? Good. How about you? I'm good. I'm good. How's it going, Eve? Pretty good. How you doing, Ryan? Very good. I was at your fight in 2010 against Derek Noble in Edmonton, Alberta. Oh, nice. That was a fun night, ass, man. I believe. <laughs> yeah, you ran out of the ring out of there. As soon as you won. Yeah, I had stuff going on. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, the 
question I wanted to ask is um, there's a lot of athletes in Canada in MMA circles that don't have much in terms of training venues to go through and I was excited to see you come out to Edmonton and I was hoping someone like yourself with a jiu-jitsu background would open up a, a camp or some sort of venue for out west because as you know there's GSP and TriStar out east but there's nothing like that in the west I know Randy Couture tried to start a, a lacrosse team out in Edmonton didn't work out so some MMA fighters might be uh, wanting to steer clear, but what are the odds of uh, guys like you bringing a venue out to train fighters in Canada out west? Ryan, thank you very much for the call. I'm going to put you on hold so you can hear his answer. However, I want to give him enough time, and we're pressed up against the clock. We've got to do a sports update. When we come back, he'll answer that question. Thank you for the call. If you want to hang in there and still have a follow-up, we'll bring you back and then showtime from Tennessee after that. Sorry, guys. I just got pressed up here towards the end of the hour, and I don't want to give... Our producer, Danny, a heart attack because he's running the ship back east and he's whispering sweet. The opposite of sweet, nothing's in my ear, so I want to make sure we uh, get out of here on time. Again, a quick sports update and then we'll come back. Eve Edwards in the house. I promise you this next run will be uh, comments on social media and phone calls. Get in the queue at 866-522-2846.
All right, here we go. It's the second hour of the MMA Junkie Radio Show. And either Eve is feeling that song or he can't wait for it to end. Which is it? I'm feeling it, man. Oh, I, you are? Like, yeah. Oh, keep playing it, Danny. I want Danny to come. I'm having a party at my house, Daddy. I want you to come DJ for me. Well, You're see. On fire, huh? Yeah, in the middle of the song, cool we took off the headsets. He goes, he asked me a question, right? And it pertained to Danny. And I go, oh, man, he's going to light up Danny and let him know that he's playing shitty music. Because <laughs> other, other athletes have done that. Or he's going to say something really nice, and it actually was on the nice side. So yeah. I'm there a nice guy, George. Yeah. I'm just, I'm just know, a really nice guy. Where we drop the ball, though? Where? He can actually rap. And he I've been heard him on Ryan candidate. Bennett's show. Yeah, he would have been a perfect <laughs> candidate for what we do to people. You want to try it? We'll try it in the next commercial. I still think we should try that. For right, sure. We'll spring it on him on the next commercial. Uh-oh. All right, so you had a question from Ryan from Alberta. He's still holding. And it had to do with uh, you know Western Canada and would you ever, you know, <laughs> build a build a team out there i guess yeah. um that that's something you have to look at the logistics of um i am from the bahamas so being in a place like canada in the winter time is not something i'm looking for i look forward to but um again logistically if it makes sense that would that would definitely be something i would be interested in uh, i wouldn't want to live there um, full time, uh, it would it would have to be something where we come in and come out, and um, but yeah, it, it all it, it, there's so many things there. You you, you got to look at at the amount of athletes that are there, people that want to train, um, what the cost and and the benefit. You have to look at all of that, and um, it's just not something. I've thought about so it's not it's not like oh I'm against that Ryan uh, I'm I'm not are there ATT affiliates in Canada I really don't know I know there's tons throughout the United there, States yeah there are tons in through the U S I don't think so wouldn't it be Camer- a Canadian top team yeah I guess you're right there? I guess yeah. I don't know um, but yeah I, I'm not sure if there are in, in Canada but um, we can do some thug we we can Ryan if you you get some information to me we can we can talk about some thug jitsu affiliates up there because. I mean, there are a couple Thug Jitsu affiliates right now. Tim Grader is a Thug Jitsu black belt. Um, Irish Muay Thai in Houston. So, yeah, let's do it. All right. Uh, let's go to Showtime in Tennessee. What's up, Showtime? It's your time. What's going on, fellas? And what's, what's up, up? Eve? Hey, what's up, brother? What's up? Man, am, am I looking at this correct? You had over... I mean, you had 65 pro fights. I knew you had a lot of fights, but hell, I didn't know it was that many. Is that is that a correct number, or is it more or less, or what? There's a lot more than that. I was fighting before they were keeping records. Um, if you had to guess, what's your real record then? Uh, real record? I don't. At 42, I, 22, and one. But yeah, I've had I've had for sure 90 fights. 90. Um, okay, so right here you're you're down for 65. There's another 25 out there. There's at least another 25. Did you go 25 and 0 in those? Or? No, no. Okay. Um, then you look at like Rich Clemente's record. There, there's a tournament that we both competed in um, that he has on his on his record, and, and I um, call those. I mean, those are amateur fights in my, in my opinion, because we couldn't punch to the face, um, and so I didn't put those things like on Pat my Grace record. Fights? Um, not even bomb open hand. Not, not even open hand to the face. Mm. Um, and then I have a bunch of open. My my first highlight video. I have it. I'll find it. I'll send it to you guys. Um, I put it up on YouTube, but like there are ten fights on that, and none of those are on my record, you know. Um, so yeah, I was I was doing it when when records weren't a real thing. Um, I mean, it was called NHB back then, and Bill Bill Clinton was president, you know. So oh, it's, it's a different time. Mm. All right, showtime. Okay, yeah, I mean, I was just looking at that, and I know a lot of guys that have uh, fought as many fights as, as you fought. A lot of them say that they have a lot of fights that you know, that they want to count it for. So I've been a big fan of yours, man. Love your work. Love your professionalism. And um, can't wait to see you call the fights today. Um, and, and George, mm. I want to make a comment, man, as far as, you know, what we were talking about is brothers riding with brothers. Yep. What it is, man, it's, it's not necessarily brothers riding with brothers. It's just if, I, if I'm if i down with somebody, if I'm loyal to them, I'm going to pretty much give them the benefit of the doubt. It's almost like, if I'm listening to you guys show and you know the relationship we have when I come hang with you guys or right. whatever, if I hear somebody say something bad about the show, I'm going to come in with that, you know, because I'm, I'm down with you guys. It's not necessarily that I'm 
all, if the brother is wrong, I'm not going to be with him. I'm not going to ride with him if he's just wrong, wrong, wrong. But I'm going to give him the benefit of the doubt. And what I notice in a lot of situations, brothers, as in my black men, don't get the benefit of the doubt. Other races, they'll make an excuse for them. But when it comes to the brothers, we don't get the benefit of the doubt. That's pretty much where I stand on that. I as got you, like, Yeah, you know, I'm a gambling man. So when it comes to a fight, I'm not just going to put my money on the brother if I feel like he's not going to win. Because it's not like that, you know. But that's all it is, man. It's nothing. You know, I, I have friends of all races, so it's nothing racial with me, man. It's just I just feel like a lot of times I don't get the benefit of the doubt, man. That's it. I understand. I completely understand. I guess it was just maybe a run of a few weeks where something had happened. I'll tell you guys another quick story. There's a gentleman that both of you know. I don't want to put his name out there, even though he was in a public setting where he just simply asked about OJ because OJ's either being released or was released, yeah, right? He's, yeah, he's being released. He hasn't Pearl. been released yet, but it's already been Right, and so he, he just mentioned, um, what do you all think? Because um, he's being paroled, uh, and he did, I think, eight years here in Vegas. And anyway, to cut to the chase on that one, people started chiming in on just focusing on L.A., you know, rather than just this. His question was more to do with this. But when it did come around to, okay, okay, we're giving you your answer. Yes, it did It did seem like the time was served. He's done. He's out <coughs> just based on what happened in Nevada. But can we get your thoughts on what happened in L.A.? He wouldn't answer, you know, and it was, uh, it was a black gentleman. And I just sat there and wondered, why won't he? Why won't he just answer if he thought he did it? That's all we were asking. It's not like we were tagging OJ or nothing like that, but he wouldn't answer. I then we went that. through the Woodley thing, and then there was a few other stuff. Somebody, just even yesterday, I got the old I'm kidding, you know. It had to do with um, uh, a drug drug problem, like athletes with drug problems or, or beating the drug problems. And, of course, a white individual chimed in, like John Jones, and then a black individual chimed in. Uh, why is it got to be John Jones? Why couldn't it have been Chris Levin, you know? Now, to be fair, John Jones is just the topic. He's the more relevant fighter. But I get, so I can't, I just, I'm trying to understand if there's just a defense mechanism where you all, all of a sudden have to push back like that or if I'm just reading too much into it or what. But I love to discuss everything on this show. You know what I mean? And I feel like we can always do it like, like adults. Showtime's right. He'll come to the studio. We'll hang out. He's a great guy. He's a great fan. And I can appreciate him always having our back, you know, um, in regards to Junkie Radio. But I, I think that's what it stemmed from. Was just the last month, all the different things that were out there. And, and uh, yeah. I think there are times when uh, you ask a direct question about something and somebody avoids that topic or, or you asking that direct question because it does not serve to, to reinforce the, the opinion they're trying to put out there you know so they will they will i mean that's a political answer you get that from politicians all the mm -hmm. time you ask them something they don't even answer the question but they talk to you for two minutes you know and then you forget the question that you asked mm -hmm. so it's kind of like that um the other part of what you said uh, about the defense mechanism um yeah there's the, the, there is a defense mechanism in, in people especially when um when they feel oppressed or, or or that they've been slighted or whatever and and i get that too there are times when that 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 is that applies but um it's not always that it applies but yeah when 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 you talk about the drug situation and then someone goes and someone says john jones and then someone wants to defend that they're probably also a big fan of john jones and as he was a black man um and 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 there's there is that opinion and feeling a lot of times that um why do you want to single out my race right. f in in these negative aspects all the time you know and, and and that could be that could be stacked on years of of having that feeling from from different situations and whatnot but i mean it is what it is you, you, it's very hard for people to deal with situations individually when they have you know when they have a past and everybody has a past i think a lot of it has to do with the three of us are sitting here right now and we can look into each other's eyes as we're talking to each other and kind of get a feel where the other guy is coming from. Mm -hmm. A lot of these beefs happen online Gets lost where on you don't know what that guy, cyberspace, what yeah. he's thinking, if he's smiling as he's saying what he's saying, all those things you pick up on in person. So right. social media is just, I think you automatically just assume the worst on social media. Yeah. Showtime? Uh, you guys just broke it down pretty okay. much. 
said it out is. You're right. I mean, because a lot of times if you're talking to somebody face to face, you can tell that that person may be joking or, or what that person's saying. But when you throw something out there online, man, people basically read into it what they want to read into it. You know? That's very true. Um, and, and one thing about what I love about being part of the junkie family, man, we all get together and we all have fun, black, white, brown, red, blue, green, whatever. Yeah. And we just look at each other as human beings, as junkies. We don't look at each other as you being white, you being black. That's one of the first things I noticed when I first came out there. And hang, I'm like, dang, I like the camaraderie. Me Between too. Everybody. Me everybody too, man. Is, yeah, There's that, so much diversity in Junkie Nation, you know, and uh, I I totally dig it. Um, so I'm glad we're all able to have a, a healthy discussion. Uh, thank you very much for the call, Showtime. Okay, thank you, guys. All right, we'll see you. All right, let me ask you this. This is a different one. The bias on um, not just in our sport but in other sports – is it tough? Like, how tough is it if, you know, you're a member of American Top Team um, and an American Top Team fighter is fighting? It just seems like 99 out of 100. I don't even know why they ask the analysts. Dominic, what do you think? Oh, man, yeah, I, I got to side with Phil Davis. Eve, what do you think? Yeah, I'm going with Lombard. DC, who do you got? Uh, Kane's going to get the job. You know, you just know the alliance of the team. And maybe, the ca maybe there's millions of casuals that don't even catch it because we're hardcores. We get it, so maybe in, in the long run, Fox just doesn't care. But um, how tough is it to just say, I don't think it's going to be Hector's night or Masvidal's night or whatever, because you're in there, you're bleeding, you're sweating with them, you know, but you also have a job to do too. You have a job to do, and it, it's weird sometimes when – the person is a, is a close friend, especially, not necessarily just a teammate. Um, for me, if you're a teammate um, and I've trained with you and I think you're going to lose, I'm an, I'm – Go and tell tell if you ask me that question, I'm gonna tell you. Yeah, I don't think he's got he's got it, and these are the reasons why. But um, it's much harder when it's a friend, like say George Masvidal. Um, but then again, I can't think of a fight. Honestly, I I can't think of a fight that I just go, yeah, George would probably lose that one, or mm -hmm. Dustin would probably lose that fight. Um, but then, or Robbie would probably lose that fight. I, but I have. You believe in your friends like that. You have the utmost confidence in them. Um, even if someone can break it down, you're going to... I mean, you, you got religious people, right? And, and you, you, can, you can show them all the ways that you can't know, but they just know. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? It's, 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 it's kind of like that. You have this bias that, that comes from having a love for that individual. And, and it's hard to not have that. Have you ever had two people that you really care about fight each other? Tyron and Robbie. Oh, okay. Who'd you pick on that one? Do you remember on the Fox set? Um, I wasn't on the Fox set. Oh, okay. But um, I'm talking about when you were on the Fox set, and they said, "Eve, who you got?" Um, I don't have. I don't have that that kind of bond with um Carlos Condit, but I have a lot of respect for him, mm -hmm. and um he and Tiago Alves fought. Oh, and, that was but, a tough one. Yeah. yeah, but I did pick Tiago Tiago in that one, and so, um, so that's one of those things. Yeah, I don't think I don't think I've I've been at the Fox desk where I've had two close friends going at it. I can't think of one. If it comes up, I'll pop. I'll spit it out. But I just don't remember any of those occasions. Mm -hmm. How? What's your contract like? Do they just pay you for the year, and then when they call you, they'll need you, or is it? By the gig. That would be nice. That would oh, so be nice. By the gig? <laughs> yeah. Okay. And then do, is there a promise to you? Like, we're going to get you in here for 20 shows? Or, like, I, I, I'm trying to get a feel for, like, who are the staples. I mean, I can kind of figure it out. Um, and then there's a rotation. And then I don't know if it's just someone's hot and they want them back. Or if they promise them three in a row. Or, you know, how, how do they decide that? I don't know how it's decided. There is no, there is no uh, scheduled rotation. Mm. Um yeah, I, I don't. I, I know who makes the decision, but I don't know how it's decided. Um, and a lot of times, it's it's kind of, hey, look, I want I want to do this. Um, when what are these these I, for me, I go in with look. I know this card. I'm looking at this card, and I have I have these personal relationships with these guys. I've had this training with these guys, and and I really want to do this card. Um, but that doesn't always work out in your favor either. You mm -hmm. know, the, um, there's there's a hierarchy, and there are guys who've been, like Kenny has been there 
for so long he's been doing it for a long time he's kind of right. established you know so is um dominic and and some of those other guys so it's one of those things where you just get in where you fit in you know there's a new crop of fighters coming out okay and every day we have new guys your last fight was in 2014 and what's eventually gonna happen is you're gonna come across people who remember you as the fox analyst guy and not the fighter yeah have you felt any of that yet? Like, do you do you still feel like the former fighter, or do some people actually look at you as just media, the media guy? I don't have the feeling that um, I've been looked at as just the media guy. Um, I know that'll come at some point. And honestly, <laughs> how are you gonna how are you gonna deal with that? Uh, I'm okay with that. Here's yeah. here's my thing. Um, at some point somebody's going to look at me or a group of people, a large group of people are going to look at me the way I looked at Chris Collingsworth. I didn't know Chris Collingsworth mm-hmm. was a football player. Receiver for the Bengals, right? All right. Until, um, until I was watching some documentary about, about the strike in, in the 80s. You know, and that's when I was like, oh, shit, that guy. It's a great example, ball. actually. You yeah. know, and um, but I have a lot of respect, and I think Chris Collingsworth is one of those guys who – me myself i i look to model myself after because another thing is um for everyone that's on the desk every single guy that's on the desk if you go back and you look at their records i was in the ufc before they had their their professional debut you know what i mean so there's a there are a lot of fight fans and people that watch fights now who have no idea who eve edwards is you know and i'm okay with that but does that make it harder to be at the desk to 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 for fans to look at me and to understand that I know what I'm talking about through experience. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? So it's it's one of those things um, where I look at a guy like Chris Collingsworth and it's just you know what, just keep grinding because I remember watching Chris Collingsworth call f- football games in the '90s. Mm-hmm. You know, um, and and yeah. Like you don't have to know what I'm capable of or what I've done, but like there's a lot of people out there who don't know who Jerry Bolander is. But if it wasn't for guys like yeah. Jerry Bolander, he was one of the first starting to become complete fighters. Yeah, and if it wasn't for him and those original guys, original Lions then, Den guy, original Lions yeah. Den guy, you know, I I wouldn't. Didn't he submit I wouldn't have had Kevin Jackson? I believe. I think so. Yep. Yeah. I wasn't in an uh, but A lot of his uh, when he was really getting better was start. That's when that dark ages started, and we weren't yeah. able to really see too much of him anymore. But. He, he was a good fighter. I'm not sure if I watched the documentary or what, but Collinsworth, somebody went and followed him, what his week is like, and he breaks down a lot of film. I mean, he goes play by play. They talk to his wife and his kids and just how immersed he is because you know, the Sunday night football game is one of the highest ranked TV shows, not just sporting mm-hmm. events, but TV shows, and um, they attribute a lot of success to him being you know one of the consistent figures there, but it just – it, it's motivating in that regard as well, just to see how much the dude grinds. Yep. I'm sure he gets paid very well, but he doesn't take it for granted, and that's why he's top notch. You know, he'll know if an offensive guard is out, the guy, the big dude that's loafing in to, you know, fill in, he'll know just as much about him as as the starter. You know, and so you feel like you don't miss a beat. I, I think I feel like I cut you off. What were you saying? Do you remember him playing though? Cause yeah, I'm with because yeah, because uh, we I played against him in the thought. Super Bowl. So I remember Chris Collinsworth. Uh, he was actually a quarterback at the University of Florida. Mm-hmm. I'm not sure if he was a starter, but I know he. Um, he's like six five or six four, so he had quarterback skills, or maybe he was recruited that way. Um, but he was a, a wide receiver, great hands, not a lot of speed, but great hands. He could run his patterns. Uh, he definitely h- played for quite a few years. He also took some brutal hits too, man. Yeah, there's he was an over the middle type guy. There's mm-hmm. an unwritten scale on how you could tell if you're old, and you're still good. Okay. This oh, is shit. How this is how Did I just walk into it? <laughs> I'm, <laughs> I'm 40. Think about it, okay? If you are if you point out a player and you think of highlights, if they have to go back and play radio highlights, then you know, all right, that dude's old. Uh-huh. After that, if they're able to produce film, but it's black and white, you're like, yeah, he's still old. Mm-hmm. Then it goes to color TV, right? Mm-hmm. Then from there, it's standard definition. You fought in HD, so until they bring out something like when 4K really takes off, and they go back and they can look at your highlights and go, man, that shit was an HD. That's when you know you're old. But I, so I, you're I did have good. some standard. I did have some standard fights. Yeah, but they won't go back to those. They'll, they'll go. They'll go to your HD. I fights. remember one of your first fights. I wanted to see it, so me and one of the guys online exchanged VH, VHS tapes. 
No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> hey, tell me about this first fight. We do this from time to time. Not consistent, but we really enjoy doing it. Just your first one here that is listed is a guy named Todd Justice, October 26, 1997, World Pancreation Championships. I know you just finished telling us it was some before then, but this one, the Joe Hurley or the Tim Horton, is there anything you can look back and go, man, I can't believe, you know, the way things were run back then, anything that stood out? <laughs> That's funny that you say that, especially those two first two fights. Okay. So, um, Joe Hurley and, and Tom I want to hear Justice. something ridiculous, like, me and my opponent had to share a room. I mean, maybe not that much, but, but just something where we, it would boggle our minds compared to the way things are on now. Well, the way that, that card was set up, um, it was both of those cards. It was Guy Metzger put this fight, those fights together, and it was the Lions, Another then Lions then guy, versus yeah. everybody else, you know. And um, I was supposed to lose both those fights. I lost the decision to Joe Hurley. But um, Todd Justice, I had had a fight there earlier than that and uh, at the same arena that we were fighting in. Um, I fought some guy who was much bigger than me. I ended up, I was leg kicking him. I, he tried to shoot. I sprawled, took his back, choked him out. Anyway, um, guy didn't think a whole lot of me at the time. He put this Todd Justice kid, who was one of his one of his students, um, he was supposed to be my opponent. So everybody in the, on the red corner was Lions Den, and they were in their own locker room. And then everybody else was, was this mishmash pit of people that came together. I was the only guy from that locker room to win a fight that really? night. Really? Who yeah. was in there with you? Like the Brooklyn bar Brawler? <laughs> <Yeah>. Rene Goulet? <laughs> basically, <laughs> um, basically a bunch of nobodies that was supposed to lose to the Lions Den guys, you mm. know. Um, and then uh, Mikey Barnett was on the card. Oh, uh, I mean, like all the Lions Den guys were on this yeah. card. Um, I think Pete Williams was there. Vernon Tiger White. Vernon White fought on this card. Um, so, like, it's just what What was it the is. name of the gentleman that was missing the pectoral? Trey, Trey Telly, man, he was there, too. He was there? He fought. There I mean, go. he's from Dallas, too. Yeah. And those fights were in Dallas. Um, yeah, but it was a different time, man. Um, the fight that I was talking about, the kid I fought, I don't remember his Wh name. What did you get paid for Justice and Hurley? Do you remember? 100 bucks and $100 at the bar? It's like, like three and 300 and 300 That's not bad. That ain't bad. There's Back other then. people that have told us I got paid 50 bucks and a $50 beer tab, things like that. My first fight, I was supposed to get um, 300 bucks. I got like a buck sixty. <laughs> Wow. What happened to the other 140? Yeah, right. Oh, we didn't make any money. This is a promoter thing, so we tried to we, we tried to hold him up and get my money, but he ran out of it before um, we were able to catch up to him. Um, he said he said he didn't bring it to me, of course, himself. He sent it with someone else and said, "Hey, you, this, you know what I mean?" Um, this is the Wild West back then. But also on that fight when the one that I didn't get paid, um, Guy Metzger was refing and Frank Trigg was fighting, and um, Metzger got in the fight, and he pushed pushed Trigg back and whatever, and Trigg was like, what the fuck? And he got in his face, and they, they got into a shoving match, and Trigg wanted to fight Guy right there. Wow. Well, we have Trigg coming up like in a few Trigg. weeks. Yeah, we'll like definitely ask him about that. What event was that? That was um, <sighs> Power Ring Warriors. Trigg Power told us a story about when one of his first fights. He said he thought he was only showing up for one. <laughs> oh, yeah. He said he's in the back showering, and they go, you ready to go? And he's like, what? He was like, yeah, it's a one-night tournament. And he said he had to, like, get back out there. Um, that was his first fight. Yeah, so I just don't know if it's the same event that he's It could have been. I was um, I, I was supposed I was. they offered me a fight with Fang Trigg back then. Of course, I didn't know who he was. Uh, and he was. <laughs> and so what happened? Wh why did he push Guy again? Guy, um. Guy got between him and they were separate. He was separating the guys because I think they were on the ropes. And um, the guy was pushing him back and he was like trying to press forward to the guy. And the guy turned around and he put his hand on his chest and he was pushing him back and like kind of talking to him, like pointing his finger at him. And Trigg was like, Don't fucking talk to me like that. And he shoved Guy and he was like, he just wanted to go <laughs> at it while he was in another fight already. Right. <laughs> but Guy was like the ref. Oh, no, Guy wasn't the ref. Guy jumped in the ring. That's what it was. Oh, wow. Guy I jumped that. in the ring and Trigg was like, the fuck is this guy? He didn't. He didn't know who that guy was. And he was just pissed that guy would get in his face. Yeah, it was the Wild West back then, man. It was a lot of fun. How about Louis Cerquetas? Louis Cerquetas. Cerquetas. Sorry. Wow. Oh. Well, Anthony Holiday. Any crazy stories there? Yeah, Louis Cerquetas. Well, we're still in the '90s. There's got to be something <laughs> nutty here. No. So that was the LA Underground. Mm. Um, that was here. John John Lober put that thing on, and uh, we weren't supposed to be fighting. The cops came by, and they're they're patrolling the, the the arena um and so in la though in la okay um in compton and so um 
Loeber jumps in there with one of his teammates, and they just do this like grappling. Yeah, demonstration. Does that mean you guys were like in a warehouse underground? We were in a warehouse. Or was just it really called the underground? It was called the underground, and we were in a warehouse. Oh, okay. So it was it was as authentic as you can get. Oh wow! And um, so the cops were there, and so they jumped in, and 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 Fox was there actually. They 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 did a profile on it, and um, it's part of the reason why Bank of America fired me back in the day. But it's whatever. Really? <laughs> um, <laughs> um, but yeah. So so we're out there, and um, he. So they do this this grappling demonstration. The cops get bored. They leave. And then they're like, all right, we'll put the fights back on. So anyway, I'm fighting Luis Acidez, and I. Oh, that was just to throw him off the scent? Yeah. <laughs> oh, all we're doing is a demonstration? That's yeah. Incredible. That's incredible. funny. Awesome. And it worked. And it worked. Holy um, so shit. So all those guys took off. The cops took off. And um, um, shoot. <sighs> I can't remember. Jackson. Jackson. Jeremy Jackson? No, no. Eugene? Eugene Jackson, oh, he, he Eugene. brought some guys from from like up north down, and, and there's a bunch of guys from the UFC back then that fought there. Lober, Tito was there. Um, anyway, Tiki Tiki fought on that card. It was a tournament, and I was supposed to fight Tiki in the second round after fighting Lucio Cedes, but Tiki fought Doug something, I forget. Anyway, um, I'm on top of this Cedes guy, and I'm throwing punches from the mount, and I, I'm starting to get winded, so I sp- get my base, and I'm staying on top of him, and I, I, my head is right next to the fence, and I look up, and Tank Abbott is right there, <laughs> and Tank is like, he's looking through the fence, and he's going to me, he goes, relax! It's just like sex. <laughs> 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 like, the fuck, man? It's weird. That's funny. Talk about the king of the underground. That's what he was. Yep. We heard stories of back in L.A. Uh, I don't know if it was <laughs> like Kimbo style, the docks or what, but there there would be an agreement between um, camps or whatever, and they would meet somewhere, uh, and it would just be like an exchange. Like yeah. you put up your grand or two grand or whatever, and the winner just walks off, and the tank was involved in those. But – you don't know if it was actually true or if people just want to hype up the urban legend or say they were there or whatever. But when you started saying this and you mentioned Tank, is, was that what it was like or was it actually like um, a little bit more? It was a little bit more organized. Okay. Yeah, I mean, it was it was underground and it was illegal, well, but it was organized. What did you get paid for that? Shoot, I don't remember. Um, I really don't remember. It was no more than 500 bucks. Okay. Um, I, I had fought. Fabiano Iha, yeah, like, yeah. Oh, a couple of weeks before, and um, he was hurt from the fight, and he was supposed to fight there, and he called me, and he was like, hey, man, do you want to do this thing? And so that's why I came out, and I fought there. Um, and then Lober saw me. He liked it. He brought me back for the second one. That's when I fought. Um, who was Anthony that? Holliday? That, mm, no, it wasn't Anthony Holliday. Oh, Thomas Denny. Thomas Denny, yeah. The wild so, man. Yeah. So when you were in Mount, if they would have went, the cops would – would it have turned into a grappling match at that point? Like, um, no, because I didn't. I, I found out that they did the the grappling demonstration for the cops after the fact. I didn't find that out until I watched the Fox thing that they they put on television. Oh. I, I had no idea that that's why they were doing that. I was in the back warming up. Why would they invite Fox if they were trying to keep it low key, though? I don't know. It's if almost like a signal to for future shows to get shut down. But yeah. what that cost you a job with B of A? Can you tell us about that. So I worked at Bank of America and Fox. Um, they they were there. They filmed that, and then later they came to me and they wanted to do this profile on that thing. Um, were, you, were you like a teller or a I loan a officer? Te- I was a bank teller. Okay. Um, at a at a at a branch inside the grocery stores. Mm. Um, and so they came they came by and they wanted to film me there, but they could they wouldn't get permission from Bank of America. So they but it was a, it was a public place, public space anyway, and um. They, I think they used like some kind of camera that that was not so obvious, and um, filmed me at work. Um, did some interviews. They interviewed my mom, and um, when it came on television, though, they, they I mean, Texas is a right to work state. They could have fired me right then, but um, I think that I had a not a personal relationship, but it was it was a cl- it was a small branch, so we all knew each other and whatnot. And um, but I could tell there was some tension, and. Um, then things changed. Nations Bank bought Bank of America. They kept Bank of America. They kept the Bank of America name. Then they they moved me to a branch right across the street. And the very first time that I showed up late, it was like, you're out of here. Wow. They didn't take too kindly to you being involved in yeah. human cockfighting at the time, right? Yeah. Yeah. It was, it was, it was, it was you would have thought they would have thought it was cool, right? I would think so. Yeah. But you remember yeah. That now it would be like, cool. Oh, man. Now it would be cool. But Hell I mean, yeah. we're talking about a time when when mixed martial arts wasn't even on television. But it know? was still cool. It was really cool. 
But you had that VHS tape and a satellite dish. <laughs> <laughs> You're listening to MMA Junkie Radio on Series 6 and Rush 93. We are coming down the home stretch of another fine episode. We have Eve Edwards in the house. We're going to take this break. Uh, and don't forget, tonight at 8 Eastern, 5 Pacific, Eve will be calling the fights on the UFC Fight Pass. It's Dana White Contender Series Part 5 with the main event of Mike Rodriguez, Jamel Jones. Here's some other names in case you recognize them. Julio RC versus Peter Petty's. That's... uh. Um, Brian Butler's guy. Um, Alex Perez versus Kevin Gray. Definitely heard of Perez. Donovan Freelo goes is on the card versus Ricky Simon, one of our favorites. And, of course, some big cats move, uh, moving around a little bit in there in Shelton Graves versus Everett Sims. The action, again, starts at 8 Eastern on the UFC Fight Pass. Check it out. All right, folks, we'll be right back after this break.
They did call me cornbread. Greetings, love boy. All right, so here's, we're going to spring it on you here. Spring what? To link into the MMA Junkie Radio Network, hit us up on Twitter.com at MMA Junkie Radio. <laughs> this is MMA Junkie Radio. Here are your hosts, Gorgeous George and Goes. What was the last thing you just said to me? I said that was kind of fucked up. The reason he's saying that, audience, is because he is about to find out that you got to rap a certain part of the song. We've been getting our guests to rap the Snoop part of this song. You're going to do a cold turkey like all the others. But Ghost says you can drop lyrics, so we want to see how you do. You can. It's easy, man. You're just basically you reading. It's not too complicated. Guy. But what if I don't know the song? No, that's the, that's the whole joke. So Snoop appears in this song. And he's gonna he's gonna basically say all this, and I'll just kind of scroll up little by little, so you got to track it. So I have to track this in and karaoke this movie. Yeah, yeah. Oh shit. So he's gonna come. I'll give you a little hint. He just comes in and goes. Let me put my glasses on because I gotta read. And you can't rap without your glasses. He goes tone ten, fit and ready. Turn it up because it's getting heavy. That's all. You just gotta sing along. Oh god, this is gonna be. Uh, this is gonna. This is really gonna. It started off as a dumb segment, and it you know I gotta see spiraled today, out of control. Right? <laughs> yeah, it's coming up. You got time to rehearse. I got time to rehearse. Here's another reason. I'm gonna rehearse. Is this Katy Perry? Is this Katy Perry? Yeah. Uh, oh, I just don't play dumb. Guess. You know who it is. No, I really don't. I don't listen to pop. Really? I, I really don't listen to pop. I listen to Run the Jewels, Black Royalty. I like listen to my own music. I don't listen to like the radio. She's pretty popular though. Yeah, but I don't. I like I legit. Legit, don't listen to me. Right, right. She's. I said her name because she's the only person I could think of, except um, Ariana Grande. It's the only, the only other name that I could think of. But we told you it's Katy Perry. Why are you shazamming? Just turn that off. <laughs> <laughs> um, <coughs> another reason we do it is because our audience hates the song, so we oh. like to just shove it down their throats. That's so fucked up. It's like double like, duty. Okay. Right, is he saying? Is he getting ready? It's coming up. It's coming up. Plus oh, uh, this song up. right here. Yeah. yeah. Oh shit! See. Snoop right now, making all the noises. He's hitting mitts right now. Oh, I, Here it comes. My point, he's got to start rapping. Oh, God. This song sounds horrible. Tone 10, fit and ready. Tune it up, because it's getting heavy. Wow, wow, wow. West, West Coast. These are the girls I love the most. I mean the ones, I mean like she's the one. Kiss her, touch her, squeeze the bone. The girl's a freak, she drives a jeep. She drives a jeep. It's the middle of me. Ah! I'm okay, I won't play, I love the bait, just like I love that way. Venice Beach and Palm Springs. Some of my time is every day. Money, bring it. Boys banging out, all that ass hanging out. Bikinis, tankinis, martinis, no weenies. Just a king and a queenie. Katie, my lady. Yeah, look here, baby. I'm all up on you, because you represent California. Nice, that was good. That, 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 that was, was horrible. Good. That was good. It was your first time. And, uh, I never even heard this song. We threw you, you know, to the wolves. That's that that might have been the best one so far, right? At some point, I think you should go up to Snoop today and go the same way. I'm not worried about you taking my job. You shouldn't be worried about me taking <laughs> your job. <laughs> and Guz luckily provided a video, right? I or, did. Or can yeah. provide a video. He was all sneaking there behind the oh, that's the Starbucks cup. Fuck. Yeah. That's Speaking uh, of Starbucks cup, what, what, what's going on over there? My Starbucks is empty, man. But my bowels what's aren't. What's it say there? What does it say? It says, our barista promise, love you beverage, or let us know. We'll always make it right. Why does it say Din Thomas? <laughs> what the fuck? <laughs> I drank Dean's drink. <laughs> it was on the camera the whole time. You never noticed. No, I didn't. <laughs> Eve, can you share with us a good street fight story, please? A good street fight story? Yeah, we always ask our in-studio guests. <laughs> None have ever failed us, so don't be the first. <sighs> hey, it just put me on the spot like I know. that. Huh? <laughs> um, Actually, some fighters have told about times they got their ass kicked. Well, that was kind of cool because uh, everybody always wants to be the, the bad guy, you know, or, oh, man, I taught this guy a lesson, a bully. We love those stories. I was walking out of a strip club or I was at the uh, uh, or Denny's or White Castle or I don't know. We've heard so many over the years. I didn't get into the fight. I mean, the last fight no, 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 outside no, no, no. of. One that you've been in. Yeah. Club. Well, it's, I Unless it's a classic. We'll hear it, but. Yeah, but see, that's the thing. I I I kind of talk my way out of fights because I'm afraid to fucking kill somebody. Um, you and Bisping almost got into it for crying out loud. I don't think you walk away from too many fights. Yeah, but I mean, he can defend himself too, so that's a different story. I'm talking about was that a, was that all in fun, or were you guys getting a little heated? No, nah, we were just fucking with that's each cool. other. Right. Bisping, he's he's a cool cat. I like Michael, man. Um, 
But no, I um I went to the bathroom at one point, left my girlfriend out there. Where were you at? Um uh, in a mall in the woodlands. Okay. And, um, that sounds like Houston? Yeah, okay. Houston area. Um and I came back and this guy's, you know, he's talking to her and I don't know if he's a friend of hers or whatever. Um but and I was like, Hey, what's going on? And then she's like she has this look on her face like this dude won't leave me alone. Mm-hmm. Like she said something, I don't remember what exactly what she said. Anyway, um I was like, Okay, well, I get it. You're pretty. That's the first reason I approached you. So it's cool, but now you won't leave you alone. I was like, Hey man, look, you're like like she's she said she's with me. Oh, he goes, he that's what he said. She goes he goes, Oh, this the motherfucker you waiting on? Right? Man, that's fighting words. And right I was there. like, I was like, give oh. us a tell of the table. Was he a big dude, a little guy? Well, I told him. Like, so, so it's a part of the story. So, uh, when he said that, I was like, <laughs> dude, look, man, you're like six one, six two, about two fifteen, two twenty. I'm like five nine, one hundred and seventy pounds. Like, I don't want any problems, man. And he goes, he has this look on his face, like, yeah. So I lean in real close and I go. Because if I fuck you up in this mall in front of everybody, it's not going to look good for you. <laughs> and then he steps Damn, back and goes, that's a gangster move right that. there. Man, fuck you, dog. And then he just walks away. Oh, you know, nice. So. so you did talk your way out of a, yeah. out of a fight. Yeah. Um, but that was still a great story. But what would have been the next move? Like, had he said what you got? Like, what would you have done? I would have just jabbed him right in the throat. Yeah? Yeah. That's your poked move? him in the eyes. I don't, like, I mean, it's a street fight. I'm not playing by, there's no rules. Mm-hmm. I'm not playing. I'll, I will fucking knee you in the nuts in the street. I don't care. I'm trying to. I'm trying to protect my life. It's not. This is not a rule situation. Mm-hmm. Kind of a little bit of mean? mall street cred, right? Yeah. That's your home mall. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Woodlands is where I rocked. Okay. Now, can you tell us uh, one where you fought? The beach, the strip club, the bar. I, I, sorority, I haven't been in a fight since uh, I was in high school. I haven't been in a street well, fight since one. high school. Um. Okay, so I was walking through the hall, going to the JROTC building. This was a high school. This is in high school. Okay, so I cool. was like 17 maybe. And I was, yeah, I was doing traditional martial arts, but mixed martial arts hasn't even, hadn't even started yet. The first UFC hadn't started. Uh, maybe it had. I don't remember. Um, anyway, so I'm in the hallway. I don't even remember the fight. Oh, no. Here, I've been in one fight since then. This is it. Okay. I was playing basketball on the basketball court with some friends, and this guy was talking a lot of shit. Um, and so I started talking shit back. And um, he's wearing purple, so I started calling him the, per- the pussy in the purple shorts or whatever. <laughs> and he just, like, he was, he was a little older than me, a little bigger than me. And um, this is before I really started training, but I did train traditional martial arts. And um, then he starts talking shit to me. He wants to get into it. We start arguing back and forth. And um, he... We're about standing face to face with each other, and he swings at me, and I kind of rock back. And as I lean forward, I just fire a head kick, and I kick straight through his head. He goes to the ground. He's unconscious. I'd never knocked somebody out before, so I was scared. I thought I killed him, mm-hmm. and I ran off of the court, and I um, got in my buddy's car. I was like, let's go, man. Let's just go. Let's go, because I, I, I thought I was going to be in trouble. Mm-hmm. Like He hit the ground pretty hard, and he was unconscious. Um, and I didn't go back to the court for a couple of weeks. I thought he was, if I went back, that he was going to shoot me or some shit. And then um, this is in the hood in uh, Gulfton off of um, – Gulfton in Houston, um, southwest Houston, Sharpstown, close to Sharpstown area. Anyway, Tango few weeks. Five. I'm sorry? Tango 5. <laughs> a few weeks I, later. I saw Gangland once. I think there was a gang called Tango 5, so I was just trying to act cool here. No, the rolling 60s. Was my, 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 my buddy who I was with, him and his brother were like right. deep into that, but I, I was never in a gang or anything like that. Anyway, um, a couple of weeks later, I went back to the court. Um, finally, they were like, no, man, you should come back to the court. It's cool. And blah, blah, blah. I was like, I, I avoided it for a couple of weeks, and I went back there, and the dude was there. And first thing he did is he came, came up to me, and he shook my hand and apologized for all the shit he oh, was wow. talking. So it was it was squashed. Yeah. So it was cool. But that's the only street fight. As, as ugly as it could have been, you know, because retaliation, that happens. Yeah. The dude actually would manned up and said, all right. But, yeah, I mean, we, he, we he all played He originally tried to punk you, though, yeah. right? So yeah, he was, he was a little older, a little bigger than me. But, um, and I'm sure he thought that you just fucking smoked me. How right? did he walk up to you? Like, did you not know he was going to shake your hand until he did it? Like what kind of look? I like did three he, o'clock high, or he's kind of like this. Like no, he wasn't. Like he wasn't like mean mugging, but we were playing, and um, he we we'd seen each other for 
probably 20 minutes before that on the court, and he was on the other side of the court um, waiting for the next game, just shooting around. I was on on another court just shooting around, and I was just like, okay, well, he's not coming over here. He's not acting like he wants to get back into it, so I guess we're good. I'm I'm cool, but I just kept my eyes on him because I was – Were you like Shawn Michaels just kind of loading up the – foot just I was a fr- I, yeah I was I was kind of I, I still got this you know yeah. cautious of of because I didn't know if he was going to try to steal on me or 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 if he was like you know he had his boys around and it was just going to be like a big street fight or whatever. Voltron forms yeah. yeah exactly so but I was with some of my boys too so I was I was comfortable in that and but it was one of those times when you know I'm missing most of my shots because I'm like every time my back's to him I want to make sure that he's not coming in my direction trying to steal on me or something so or maybe you just had a cold day no, I was no? good. Okay. I was um, shit. <laughs> he just goes, no, that wasn't it. Uh, I want to give you a chance to address something that we talked about in the first hour and we ran out of time. You just said the, the hominic fight, fight haunts you. Did you have anything you else you wanted to add to that? Or or um, just it was just a fight that didn't sit well? Or were there other fights that, that, that you weren't too happy about? No, um, that, that, that was the biggest deal. I mean, um, I... There's a lot of things I believe that were around that. I like I said, I I spoken to psychologists about it and, and been concerned about it. And um, it was a big. It's a the reason why it was a big deal. Um, before that, I went over to Pride. Um, I came back, and the UFC was a different beast at this point. Like instantly, you know. Um, I was I was the number one guy when I left. Um, Josh and I were supposed to be fighting for a belt. We were the best guys in the division, and then I came back and and. The arena, I mean, there are people at the weigh-ins. There weren't people at the weigh-ins before that. You know what I mean? There are people at the weigh-ins this time, and um, it's just bigger. It's a different beast. And then we start fighting, and I know I'm the better ground guy than than Hominick. And um, I know his kickboxing is solid, but I'm comfortable with my kickboxing too. But he's pushing forward. And there's a moment in fights. A lot of guys, if you ask them about this, they'll tell you this. There's a moment in fights where you first feel your your wind. You're like, and at that moment, if you relax and get through that, you're good. But if you panic, that it can kind of constrict you. And at the, I was like, oh, shit, I'm getting tired. I remember thinking that. And um, I was thinking, okay, okay, I got to change the game. And I took him down, um, and he... He, I was in his butterfly garden. I, I use this pass all the time. I show it to everybody all the time. I use it, I, when I say use it all the time, I mean daily. So I'm trying to hit this pass, and it didn't didn't happen. And I was like, holy shit, I'm supposed to be so much better than this guy, and this is my pass. Why didn't it work? What's going on here? Oh, his leg's on my shoulder. Oh, don't worry about that because he's still in this butterfly guard, so I'm not even concerned with it. But why didn't this pass work? This kid, I'm supposed to be so much better than this kid on the ground. And then, and then oh, shit, this triangle is real. And at that point, I, I didn't even know he got his leg out and got into position because I was in another place. I wasn't there in the fight. I was, I was thinking about other shit, and I'm supposed to be better than this guy. I'm supposed to tap him. Like, uh, I was supposed to get this to the ground and be able to do what I wanted to do when I wanted to do it. And um, that wasn't going on. And, um, yeah, that, that, that was a big deal to me, man. And, and having a tap from that position... Um, like I, st- I st- that still bothers me. Like when I talk about, like, uh, yeah, I've talked about it with psychologists and all this other stuff. But like, I still, and then if somebody somebody questions my integrity over that and say that I threw the fight, or um, or even 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 to say that I suck because um, I panicked. I had a moment of weakness when in a time when you're not supposed to. When you and, and um, yeah, that's still that 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 I don't know. Yeah, I still I still have some stuff to work out to get through that, but um, it is what it is. I lost a lot of confidence then, and um, and then then I fight fought Joe Stevenson wasn't wasn't my best fight then, mm-hmm. and then having to leave the U- or leaving the UFC at that point, um, yeah, that was that was a hard time, man. There was yeah, that was fucking shit. We're going to take this last break, and then we'll come back and close up shop. This is Eve Edwards from Fox Sports. He'll be calling the fights tonight at Dana White Contender Series 5, 8 Eastern, 5 Pacific. Check it out, man. You won't be disappointed. Five fights come your way, one right after the other. It's a great night of fights, and I'm glad the UFC's doing it. Still got three weeks left after this week, so don't miss out. A lot of uh, great talent has been signed so far. Uh, stay close, folks. See you in a couple.
King Kong has a lot of shit on them. Like a lot. Thank you. Especially goes. Here are gorgeous George and goes. All right, folks. We got 90 seconds left. I'm going to do a soft exit, and he has, yeah. has agreed to stay an extra five minutes. Uh, so Brian from Boston will take your call first. Then goes has some questions regarding cheeseburgers Can't and uh, like slices of pizza. Yeah. Because E, one thing that made him very unique was during the weigh-ins, he'd always walk up. It was usually a cheeseburger. And it was actually pretty funny because on the other side, you'd have an opponent that was suffering, man. You just know they went through way more than Eve did. And Eve would casually <laughs> walk up. Sometimes it was a bite. Sometimes he'd offer it. Just the smell alone would kill me. You know what I mean? I eat lunch at 1230. If I get to about 115, I'm panicking. I'm shaking. So I can only imagine dehydrating yourself. 10% of your body weight, you know, less than what you normally walk around at. And then you got some joker who you know. I shouldn't call you a joker. Some athlete, <laughs> <laughs> sorry, 24 hours later is going to try and beat the shit out of you. Ago. He's going to try and beat the shit out of you. And then to talk about how he's taunting you with food. So we got to find out a little bit more about that psychology. So, again, he's going to stick around five minutes. We'll get to all these things. You're listening to MMA Junkie Radio on Sirius XM Rush 93. Sirius XM audience, you're going to leave us here in about 20 seconds. A uh, couple things. We're on the Sirius XM app. You can listen to us commercial free and in HD quality. So if you missed any of the show, do it. Grab it. Also, the rest of you, the overtime will be on Facebook.com forward slash official MMA junkie. Just a couple minutes, and then we'll be out of your lives. Stay close. Brian from Boston, what's on your mind, my man? There is no Brian. Brian's not here. Oh, I didn't. Uh, there was <laughs> a Brian from Boston on the VX. I didn't refresh. My like bad. Half an hour. That, 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 that the ship sailed? That, no, the song that you closed out with, you just lost all your, your, your cool points. We're in Vegas, though. Still. Viva that's not, that's not a me pick. That's a show pick. Viva Las Vegas. Nothing? All right, give him the backup. What's the backup, Danny? Tom, uh, uh, Tom top Cruise, Top, top Gun. gun is what we yeah. end with. We'll end with that one. Since <laughs> he didn't like this one. Sorry, I didn't refresh the VX. So Brian from Boston's gone. We're done with that. Goes hit him up with the. He had some questions, I guess. So back in the day at the weigh-ins, George kind of teased it. You would always show up with some sort of food, and you'd take a few bites as you were weighing in. It was hilarious. But like he said, a lot of your opponents were probably hurting pretty bad, and some of them would give you a scowl, but some of them would play along too. Um, what are some that you remember the most? And I had brought up a story, but I don't think you remember it, about the muffin in Dallas. Yeah, I, d I don't remember being over. Uh -oh. I mean, it was quick. You just went in the back and lost it, like, in 30 seconds. Probably had a coffee out. and took a shit <laughs> or something. <laughs> but go ahead. First, first, the who did it affect the most? Did anybody ever, like, just not feel you on the whole cheeseburger thing? I don't know who it affected the most. Um, maybe Cody McKenzie uh, is in that. We were, I, <laughs> I had hot chips. And um, no, it was it was it was um, potato chips, but they were I think they were Lay's flaming hot potato chips. Mm -hmm. And um, I play it off, and I knew what was going to happen because I do that stuff all the time. And those things turn to paste in your mouth when your mouth is dry like that. Um, oh, okay. Yeah. So I ate a few of them, and I gave him some, and um, I could see it in his face that he was trying to he was trying to he was like, oh, what is going on in my mouth? <laughs> but, you just um, punked me type of thing. Yeah. Okay. But um, I didn't react to it. I could just see it in his face, and I was like, yeah, that's one for me. You've done a uh, Twix, right? I remember the Lay's. Twix, uh, Twinkies. Twinkies. Slice of pizza, I thought. Yeah, Twinkies. Um, Snickers. Did you have to, like, Chipotle. lose those pounds to compensate for the couple of bites you'd have to take? Or were you always just kind of on, and was it the easiest loss for you? Um, So, usually, day of weigh-ins, I would wake up at about no more than 158. Mm -hmm. Um. And it would take me half an hour to do about four all pounds. Right, so you weren't sweating. No, so no, no pun intended, but you weren't sweating this at all. Right. Gotcha. And a lot of times I would get down to like 53 and then like eat something. Like I would truly eat something before the weigh-ins right. and get back up to like 55, 56. And I would just stay there. And if I was at 56, I'd float a little bit. Um, what started off the gimmick? Just like did someone dare you? Was it your thing? And did it just – you felt like it, ca it caught on and that had to be your thing? You know where it started? Um – 
Ricardo Mayorga. I feel like I saw the him boxer? do that. Yeah, I feel like I saw him weigh in with an apple or something. Did he one steal point. on you once? Oh no, that's Dean Thomas. My bad. <laughs> <laughs> with um, he used to smoke in between rounds. Yeah. Yeah. Back in the day. So what did Mayorga do to influence? I him? think he like ate an apple or something at a okay. weigh in, and I was like, you know, that's cool, but like an apple is he- is healthy, so I'm gonna s- like eat some crap food right. at the weigh ins and no, I'm just act like it's not a big deal to me. I think uh, the first time I may have done it was the Hominic fight with the burger. Mm. Was there ever one that got outlawed? Bowl of pasta or something? No, but they took my they took my chips from me when I stepped up on the scale with the chips, and I was like, I, I was a little upset about that because that kind of ru- not ruined my gimmick, but um, actually it did kind of save it <coughs> with her um, taking my chips away from me. Kind of made it even more. Um, apparent that I was doing something. All right, we'll close with this. I tweeted this the other night. Uh, I'll just read it to you the way I tweeted it. I said, can the guys on Fox do a little better when explaining their techniques? They barely move one step short of the mannequin challenge. Now, remember, I'm constricted to 140 140 characters, characters. but and I guess I was trying to be funny. I had a little bit of wine, so I'm prefacing this. Uh, But Kenny fired back at me because Kenny Florian worked the desk with Eve and then I finally had to tell him, Calmate, huevo. Just a joke. Mm-hmm. Uh, but who knows? Because Kenny's cool, and I would never want to, like, you know, hammer the guys because that's not my intent. I guess I was just trying to be funny. But what I'm getting at is, uh, I, like, I watch a lot of sports, and especially the NFL, when they're trying to explain either what happened, so if it's a post week show, week roundup, or even when it's about to happen, the guys will get in there, even. Terry Bradshaw, bad back and all. Sometimes he'll be the center or whatever, and they'll actually block and explain the technique and what a receiver can do and a swim move, Keyshawn Johnson, and what the corner should do, and then the guy will really throw the pass. And Of course, it's not game speed, but I feel like, okay, I, I get it. They explained it. But sometimes you all will go, okay, so what he did was, and it seems like the other guy's thrown off, almost like it wasn't rehearsed. Like, okay, what? Oh, no, he's a lefty. Oh, no, get your hand up. And in the end, it's like it feels botched sometimes. And sometimes, I don't know if it's the tight suits you guys are wearing or what. It's just, I don't know. That, that was my my, my uh, criticism. Well, sometimes we don't have the time to to really get into it. Um, yeah. And especially um, from last weekend, I, I do remember that. But there was really nothing different from what happened, what we talked about in the pre-fight show. Between what happened in the fight and then to the what's the post fight show and dealing with that, um, Sergio Pettis did exactly what we felt and what Kenny show demonstrated before that he needed to do: use his footwork, stay on the outside, pick him apart from there. Um, and yeah, and then when as far as my demonstration, uh, I we it was I was not going to be able to take Kenny down in suits on 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 a tiled floor, mm-hmm. you know. So um, I, I what if it was done pre in workout gear? Like, I'll give you an example. Bellator, they used to do sw- slick submissions. What was it called? With the ring card girls? Yeah. yeah. Granted, the ring card girls enhanced this. But Jimmy would say, all right, cr- and he would technique. explain <laughs> the technique or whatever, but they'd actually finish it all the way to the top, to the tap or whatever. But Or even, I guess, even the Gracie brothers, when they would do stuff post-fight, you know, they're in their geese and all that. But, it, um, like, I, I just really feel like the audience would maybe learn from maybe if you guys did it prior to putting on your suits this is what you can expect or whatever or, or i don't know yeah that's uh that's or, def- I, or i can just shut up and i mean that's a production thing and we, we we've got someone in our air all the time um telling us when to rap um you know they 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 we're up against the clock all the time especially being on television um you're up against the clock for for a commercial and whatnot and yeah, there was there was really no, nothing to demonstrate from that fight again that was any different from what we talked about in the pre-fight show and um yeah, it was it was put on us pretty quickly and and I mean, that's not an excuse. We we're, we're, we're there to do a job and I felt that we did it well. So yep. you can suck it, Joe. <laughs> 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 all right, I'll take that one. First of all, thanks for doing the show. Good luck tonight. Like I told Jay, he happened to head that way, you know, bathroom break during the thing i go man they don't make him any cooler than eve so thanks for doing the show and opening up you know about your past and all that stuff the street fight stories this, is, this was really really one of my favorite shows that we've done in a this while when we get to geek out right yeah yeah seriously and you're a legend in our sport man Thank and i'm you, glad Josh. that you've graduated from 
from fighting and you've you've done it all there and now you're calling fights you're analyzing fights so we're really really happy for you i'm gonna be the black chris collinsworth man there you go the first eve edwards that's what's up <laughs> folks follow him on twitter at the I mean, he Jitsu just called Master. himself eve edwards how does that i said the first eve edwards no nah, we can go back <laughs> in the tape danny you got the tape can you do it that quick yeah do it if i'm wrong i'll wipe my I ass i have to stop hand. it to record it so uh, okay we'll find out post oh. show. We'll, we'll find out post show um but hit the top gun if you can I want to thank Eve Edwards, and you can follow him on Twitter, at Thug Jitsu Master. Tomorrow we'll be joined in studio by Kevin Ioli from Yahoo Sports. He'll be our co-host. Mike Perano, Sportsbook Director here at Mandalay Bay, he'll be uh, here in studio. Al Bernstein will also be another guest. We'll talk Mayweather, McGregor, and Chidi Njikawani, who's fighting uh, Andre Korshkov, correct, guys? Mm -hmm. At an upcoming Bellator. We'll find out about that. That's the main event. Uh, Njikawani's one half of the Njikawani brothers, brother, uh, younger brother to... Uh, Anthony Anjikwani. Younger, but bigger. Yeah, there you go. But he's like eight years younger. <laughs> Looking forward to uh, Thursday. Heath Herring will be our co-host for the entire episode. Uh, Georgie Karakanyan will stop by as well. Ray Cepho will co-host Friday show. And Cheyenne Velismas uh, from Extreme Couture will also be on the show. So we got a lot uh, going on. And uh, thank you all for tuning in for the extra overtime. Thanks, Danny, for staying over. Jay, good to see you. Goes, you did a great job. Eve, you're outstanding. I took it to another level, though. I was fantastic. So we're out of here. Go Man U and go out and be champions. <laughs>